champions were crowned yesterday, and three more are ready today. High-flying Gilmer, averaging 61 points per game, meets West Orange Stark in Game 1, coming up next. It's said that in Texas, baby boys are put in a crib with a football with them. It's a state that sometimes the short road trip is 100 miles away. Towns have been known to shut down on a Friday night. That's what high school football means here. From the farming towns to the big cities, schools and people unite over high school football. And the dream is soon to be realized. The wait is almost over. A Mike Eli from the Eli Young Band. The Texas High School Football Championships are coming up next. State High School Football Championship Weekend in Texas begins with game one of a triple header. At AT&T Stadium in Arlington, it's the Class 4A Division II State Football Championship between the West Orange Stark Mustangs and the unbeaten Gilmer Buckeyes as they go for the crown of 4A Division II. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us again here on Fox Sports Southwest. I'm Craig Way. Game one of a triple header, 4A Division I will follow, and then 5A Division II tonight. But as far as 4A Division I goes, Division II rather, Gilmer and West Orange Stark kind of contrasting in styles. Gilmer with its explosive offense and West Orange Stark with its outstanding defense. Joined by Brad McCoy, who helped coach a couple of teams into state championship appearances at Jim Ned and Gilmer. It's always an indescribable moment, isn't it, to get it, a team to the finals? It really is, Craig. I'm telling you, to get to this, this top of the season when you have a 16-game season in high school, it's a long, long year. So congrats to all these guys that have been here. Well, we start with Gilmer, and you look at the offense. We talk about how explosive they are. They have some eye-popping numbers when you look at what the Buckeyes have posted offensively during the course of the year. They really have. I mean, when you when you look at the balance, uh, 4,400 yards passing, over 3,700 yards rushing, it's hard to defend a, a team like that uh, because they do two things so well. Well, and they start with the quarterback and the receiving end of it. When you can have that pass game going with guys like McLean Carter and Blake Lynch, you have a shot to really put up some points. Absolutely. You, all, you always need a tandem. And, and with McLean going for over 3,700 yards and, and Blake obviously a commit to Baylor and call 1,000 yards, 19 touchdowns, does a tremendous job going to get into football. So it's going to be fun to watch those two. With Gilmer having all of that offense, how do you stop it? West Orange Stark might have the answer because of what they do defensively, keyed by their tremendous safety, Deontay Thompson. Deontay does a great job. He's a ball hawk. He plays both sides of the ball. Uh, he, he does a great job on offense, but obviously a commit to Alabama. Uh, they've got him because he, he does a great job in the defensive back end of that secondary and really holds it down. So he'll make a lot of tackles, but he'll, you better watch out where he is when you throw the football as well. Yeah, because also on the offensive side of the ball, he can catch the ball and go for touchdown. So it's Gilmer and West Orange Stark, the 4A Division II State Championship, and the kickoff is coming up next. Yeah, man. The State High School Football Championships are brought to you by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by Ford, the Dream Big Sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Moments ago, the West Star and Stark Mustangs in their locker room with head coach Cornell Thompson. Make them play that first quarter. You get after their rear that first quarter. This game's going to be ups and downs, highs and lows for 48 minutes. We'll talk about it after 24, but you get after their rear play Mustangs football. We deserve to be here. There's no question. Yes, sir. We're talking about how good that we, we're as good as they are. So go out and let's prove it right now. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Now, hey, you give out, you don't give up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With a coach and his team, that's West Orange Stark. How about Gilmer? Third member of our team, Aaron Hardigan, down on the sidelines with Buckeyes head coach Jeff Traylor. Coach, you've been on this stage before. You know the emotions. Today, however, making a very different trip on the way in, visiting Dez's grave site. How do you think that impacts this team today? Uh, well, we've been having on our mind all year long, and uh, kids were wonderful at the cemetery, and they were great the whole week. Uh, we're going to play well tonight. It's a battle of one of the most prolific offenses in this state in yours versus one of the most dominant defenses. What gives? 
It's a great question. Whoever makes the most plays, I think our defense is going to play really well for us to win the ball game, and our special teams have to be huge. Looking forward to it. Best of luck, Coach. Thanks. Bill Jones, good well. Craig, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Aaron. And now Gilmer will get the football. They've won the toss, and the Buckeyes want to put that offense on the field, so they will receive to start this football game. And it's the Buckeyes who will wear the all-black with the orange trim and West Orange Stark in the silver with the white. Mustangs with a great state championship pedigree. Brad, what about what goes through a coach's mind and a player's mind to this moment here right before it gets going? Well, you just want to get to kickoff, Greg. You, you want the ball to, to get in the air, and it kind of gets all the... Uh, the nervousness out and start playing the game. It's a the build up to get here that the week before all the media the hype coming to Cowboy Stadium uh, all that's fixing to go away in about 10 seconds when this ball is kicked off and then it just becomes a game like all the rest of them. So you want to get it done. Kickoff for the Mustangs and it's underway and a deep kick out of the back of the end zone and a touchback. So it'll be Buckeye football the start from the 25 yard line. We told you about McLean Carter outstanding senior quarterback and has completed 75% of his passes this season those eye popping numbers of over 3700 yards and 46 touchdowns. So the Buckeyes go right to work. And immediately spread the field. To Chris Boyd, Boy, the senior running back. Short game as we look at the Ford offensive lineup. The starting lines presented by Ford. Colin Harden, Lucas Garrett, Dane Jester, Johnny Perez, and Colton Hendricks are the up front offensive line. Chris Boyd in the backfield who just caught that pass. Jackson Sykes joins in there. Blake Lynch, the explosive receiver, headlines that receiving core for the Buckeyes. Gain of six and second down and four. And Sweeping around the corner and turning it upfield is Chase Tate. Tate will pick up five and a first down for the Buckeyes. Four defensive starting lineup for the West Orange Stark Mustangs. The five-man front for the Mustangs. With the nose guard, Andell Turner King, Keelan Garrett, Scott McCarty, Octavius Cross, and Trey Baldwin. The linebackers, Justin Brown and Tevin Sims and Deontay Thompson headlines. That's stalwart secondary for the Mustangs. First and ten for the Buckeyes from the Gilmer 36. Opening moments of this 4A Division II title. And right to the air. And broke it up. Blake Lynch going for it. And guess who? Deontay Thompson breaking it up, Brad. You're going to see You're going to see that matchup all night. That's two great commits. Uh, I'm sure they're going to match Deontay up on Blake all night long. And that was a, that was a great throw, but a great recovering speed uh, defensively. So uh, that'll be fun to watch today. Get another look at it. And stuck right with him now. And second down and 10. And McLean Carter. This time, a quick hand off to Boyd, turn of the corner, and forced out of bounds after the short game by Malik Phillips, the safety. Here's another look at that pass, Brad. Yeah, it, 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 great. Th McLean put it right in where he needed to be, and, and uh, just a great play by the defense. It, it did a great job recovering on that speed. Uh, you're going to see great plays from those two all night long. I think speed is uh, one of the key words there this afternoon. And Brad, no doubt about it. There's That's the quick good. pass. And that one broke it up a bit. Hit ball in and out of the hands of Chase Tate and Will Johnson, senior quarterback, unloaded on Chase Tate to knock the ball loose, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, great play there. I mean, you, you see, you see the Buckeye offense is, is really reading that corner, uh, you know, where he's going flat, deep. Uh, maybe not. I don't know what kind of read there was, but he did a great job. Will did coming up and, and checking that ball loose. But Gilbert's going to go for it on fourth down and five, at least setting up to do so. Now McLean Carter is all Buckeye pumped, and he'll drift back as if to kick. And the left-footed kick of Carter, with no one back to receive it, will bounce and be down around the 17-yard line. A 42-yard punt as Jeff Trailers. Offense winds up going three and out, and now his defense will be on the field against Jackson Dallas and the West Orange Stark Mustang 
offense, a sophomore quarterback, Dallas. Over 2,200 yards passing. 29 touchdowns and six interceptions. Leading the Mustang attack. So from the West Orange start, 17-yard line. The Mustangs, their first possession. Trey Baldwin will line up in the backfield. You see him both at running back and receiver. And the toss to Baldwin. Picks up nine yards before Nick Smith can take him out of bounds. The Ford starting lineup for West Orange Stark across the front. Scott McCarty, Octavius Cross, Joshua Rabo, Virgil Vontori, and Paul Abair. The backs and receivers, Jeremiah Shaw, Trey Baldwin, Deontay Thompson. Yes, a receiver on the offense as well as what he does on defense. Dee Wolford and Will Johnson, the other receivers. And you look at Thompson. Has 14 touchdown catches this season. Baldwin, the running back, he'll draw the carry again. And Baldwin, a first down and more. Finally wrapped up by Blake Lynch. Well, that's a pickup of seven more yards and another first down as you look at the fourth starting lineup on defense. Tristan Oliveris, Jamal Wheeler, and Christian Lloyd. The defensive front, Preston Smith, Freddie Curtis, Zod Heath. And Jamel Jackson, the linebackers, into the second air for the Buckeyes. LaMarcus Morton, Nick Smith, Chase Tate, and Quinn Fluella. First down and 10 as a star and start. Picks up a first down and it's first possession. Baldwin again on the carry. This time he's popped pretty hard still. Keeps the legs moving for a gain of close to four yards. Tristan Oliveris, Devin Smith. Tackle, you can hear the hitting going on early here this afternoon, Brad. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be a, it's gonna be quite a physical game. Not a lot of huddle goes on out there. They're, they're gonna get a lot of plays in, uh, so it's gonna be a fun game to watch. Uh, the number of plays we're gonna get, but they're running the football really well. You know, we were talking about the West Orange Stark defense, and rightly so to open the telecast, but they've got a very explosive offensive attack too. Oh, they do. You know, they they, they wouldn't be here if they weren't. So you got a, a couple of kids going both ways that, that have a lot of skill, so you're gonna see a lot of them. Second out and seven for the Mustangs. From the West Orange start 33 again to the ground. This time it's Jeremiah Shaw, a sophomore. Shaw wrapped up by Freddie Curtis, Cameron Granville, and all that. Gain of a couple, and it's third down coming up. Collier and Curtis did a great job. They really read those guards and did a great job filling that up. So we're bringing up a big third down. Third and five. At the 38, the initial possession for the Mustangs. Jackson, Dallas, with a shotgun, and will throw. Outside, catch, and room to run for a first down. Jerome Preston, a senior. Going to get a flag there as well, Craig. Looks like it might be a late hit. Catch for the first down and the flag on the end of the play. Jeff Trailer wanting to know what the flag was about. We'll Hear about it coming up. This greater Houston area chapter of officials. Probably just rode him out of bounds a little bit far. I think the hit was fine. Greg Maxwell is the referee of this Houston chapter. He'll give us the explanation. Personal foul. Dead ball, late hit. Number 20 on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Cameron Grantville. A little too much at the end of the play here. Brent. Yeah, he did a great job. A great scheme there, kind of a crawfish scheme, and does a great job. But he just, you know, if he finishes him off and stops, he just to sneak him out of bounds. Back to the air, and too much on that pass, intended for Deontay Thompson from Jackson Dallas. Now look at the hit here, Brett. You know, the hit was fine inbounds, and then it's just the, the extracurricular at the end. Again, first of the game, a lot of emotions flying high really right now, and, and kids want to play really hard. Uh, so it's just unfortunate that uh, he didn't let it go. Yeah, and they called out the 20, but it was 21. It was Chris Boyd, who was the one who had a little extra sling out of bounds that cost the Buckeyes 15. Second down and 10, West Orange start. At the Buckeye 38. Baldwin in the backfield. And to the air, that pass incomplete in and out of the hands 
outside trying to go outside for the catch and unable to come up with the football was Keon Hancock. <laughs> I bet Lynch is wishing he'd been watching that ball a little closer. Oh. He had a great shot at a pick six right there. No doubt about it. Blake Lynch coming up from the corner position to deliver the blow. And another third down coming up. Now it's third and ten. Baldwin in the backfield. Four wide receivers. lot of time. Now under some pressure. Will look to run. Dallas sliding forward and it's going to be short of the first down by a couple. Picked up eight down to the 30 yard line. Brings up fourth down and two. Now Gilmer did a great job there. You know they were up in bump and run when the play started. Gave Dallas a certain. It gave that did it gave a certain uh, look and then bailed out into that zone and uh, just didn't ever see what he needed to be. Deontay did a, did a great job right there. He's, he's sure he's getting covered. Tried to get loose, could not. Now, fourth down and two, and the Mustangs will go for it at the Buckeye 30-yard line. Shaw in the backfield and ready to take the snap is Will Johnson. Johnson is the backup quarterback and, of course, a wide receiver. And now a flag comes down because the play clock with the zero. Five-yard penalty. Repeat. Fourth down. And, Brad, might that have been a design by Cornell Thompson just to see if they could get Gilbert to jump here on fourth down? It could have been. If, if their idea was to go ahead and punt the ball, that gives them some more room. But I will say this. I, I love AT&T Stadium. It's a great place. But you do – one of the things that you have to do with your quarterback is make sure you identify these clocks because they are in tough places to see. And so you really got to keep a close eye on those as your quarterback. So now – they're still going to go for it on fourth down at seven from the 35. Dallas back in at quarterback. And Jackson Dallas is going to run with some room in the first down. Jackson Dallas sliding in a gain of 12 and a first down for the Mustangs. Five-yard penalty, no problem. No, we just need a little more room. Dallas said I need some more room to scramble around out there. As you said in the last the last two pass plays, Craig, you know, they're not getting a lot of pressure on Dallas. They're, they're going with a three-man front uh, and putting a lot of people in the secondary. So that may pose a problem as the day goes on. At the 23-yard line. Johnson now in at quarterback. And Will Johnson, out of a wildcat set, goes forward down to the 20. Oliveris the tackle, gain of three yards. Obviously, most spread teams do have a wildcat look. Uh, the quarterback, Will Johnson, was out uh, was out on the right side. I don't know if they have anything double pass-wise to Dallas out there, but uh, you can always watch for that. Second down at seven. This is the first drive for West Orange Stark after Gilmer went three and out on his initial possession. The Mustangs have converted two third downs and one fourth down on this drive so far. Shaw in the back. Dallas back at quarterback. And it's Shaw. Not pretty hard right at the line of scrimmage. Kelton, Collier, and Dakota Williamson team up on the tackle for no game. Williamson does a great job there at the, at the nose tackle. You know, again, they're only playing a three-man front, but uh, he controlled the guard and center that time and um, had some great penetration. So now it's third and seven. At the Gilmer Buckeye 20-yard line. This will be the 11th play of the drive. Making the 12th play of the drive now for the Mustangs. 12th play of this drive coming up. Baldwin. Lowers the shoulder. Baldwin. Surging forward. We'll have another first down. Williams to the tackle. A gain of eight. Once more, West Orange start to burst this time on the ground. Yeah, at fullback that time, uh, David Bundage did a great job lead block out on that, that outside linebacker and really gave some great room. Great, great play there. First and ten, another first down for the Mustangs. They've marked 71 yards on this drive so far. They've picked up five first downs. 
from the Buckeye 12-yard line. Dallas. Hit run. Does choose to run, and he'll score. Jackson Dallas in for the touchdown. Got a little speed there, Greg. I didn't know if he was going to be able to turn that corner, but when he got there, he made it all happen. Great angle. A great turn of the and kept the feet in bounds, Brad, which is the other challenge you have to do when you're tight rope on that sideline. Yeah, you got all your momentum headed out. He just he stuck that right foot and stayed in. That's what a great play from your quarterback there. That's that's the great start of the game. Sophomore quarterback scoring the touchdown, leading the opening drive. Dallas puts West Orange Stark in front. Nice start for the sophomore quarterback, Jackson Dallas. Jack Dallas leading West Orange Stark downfield and finishing that Ford scoring drive of 83 yards and 13 plays. Brad McCoy, it took 541 off the clock. It did, you know, and, and a lot of times these spread offenses like West Orange Stark, you know, they just don't have a lot of time of possession, but they did a super job there. Obviously went for it on fourth down and got it once. Had a couple of great third down conversions, but a pretty good ball control there as well as as, as well as some quick strike. Cornell Thompson, longtime assistant to Coach Dan Hooks, who won multiple state championships at West Orange Stark. Kick off of Devin Smith. Smith popped hard. He'll go down at 31 yard line after an 11 yard return on the kick. So can the Buckeyes, Nancy waiting on the sidelines, that offense for all that time during that scoring drive, now looking to go back to work. So as Gilmer spreads the field on offense. The Buckeyes now huddle over to the sidelines and we'll take a timeout. And as we go to break, here's a special message from State Farm. Lifetime, you know what else is the chance of a lifetime? The Daytona 500, yesterday and tomorrow, sit side by side. The Daytona 500, this February 22nd. Tickets are on sale now at Daytona500.com. Second possession for Gilmer, that explosive offense, not accustomed to being sat down with a three and out. That's what happened on the first drive, and here's drive number two, and Carter to the air and broke it up. Over the middle for Chase Tate, Trey Spencer knocked the ball loose. Did a great job, broke on it. You know, he thought about trying to break for that interception altogether. I think he had second thoughts. The ball came, it's a really well thrown ball. A great job of hand in there. So it's second and 10. From the 31. See that speed out of the secondary already exhibited. Now a pass underneath the coverage to Quinn Fluellen, senior wide receiver. And he'll pick up 16 yards. Gilbert's first first down of the day. Yeah, I'm impressed with Blake uh, with uh, McLean Carter. And does a great job back there. Good footwork uh, and putting the ball right where he wants it right now. Out to the 46 yard line. Making the 47 and a first down for Gilbert. Tried for some misdirection and West Orange Stark not fooled at all. Chris Boyd hit hard. Scott McCarty, one of the Mustangs there, as well as Mandel Turner King. So it's second down and nine for the Buckeyes. Carter will look over that West Orange def Stark defense and check with the sidelines. Perhaps to change the play call as Carter glances down at his wristband. To the ground. And again, tough sledding. Still, however, surging for Nice job by Chris Boyd. Looked like he was going to be brought down after a gain of only a yard and wound up making that a four-yard pickup. Yeah, pretty strong. Kept his legs going. Offensive line got in there behind him. Again, Gilmer sees something that they're trying to get to. A lot, lot of gamesmanship going on. A lot of... Uh, I think there were two different checks, one from the sideline and one again from McLean there, so they, they go to their third option. Big play here. Third down and four. Carter will hand it back. Surging forward into the 45. And no more than that is Boyd. 
Octavius Crossum coming in on the tackle for the Mustangs. It's going to be fourth down and short for Gilmer here. We'll see where the spot of the football is and exactly what they need. It looks like they'll need one yard, Brad. Interesting call here for uh, Coach Trailer early in the game. They were three and out the first series. They, they really don't want to give the ball up again. Uh, I'm not sure what formation they're looking at, but I'm just thinking pretty serious about going for this. You see Chris Boyd out at the top of your screen, one of the two receivers at the top of your picture. Fourth and a yard. Got Blake Lynch at the quarterback. And had trouble handling the snap and still turns the corner. Does Lynch, but he can't pick up the first down. Deontay Thompson wraps him up. A loss of three, and it'll go over to the Mustangs. And tough, tough call here early in the game. They went to what they would call their wild clap with their with their great uh, receiver, Blake Lynch, uh, at quarterback. And, you know, if the timing was off, the snap was obviously before Blake uh, thought that he was going to get that and, and kind of threw the whole thing off in the beginning. Allie Onus is on the Gilbert defense with West Orange Stark already a very impressive touchdown drive on their first possession. They're going to get the football in great field position at the Mustang 48. Jackson Dallas already led the Mustangs to the first touchdown and now back on the field for West Orange Stark. The toss to Jeremiah Shaw in the Buckeye territory. Dakota Williams in the tackle will pick up a four. Now brings up second down and six. And a long six at that. The ball is just inside of 49. Ball with the running back for the Mustangs. Ball with the carry. Surges forward. Inside the 45, near the 44-yard line. A gain of nearly five yards on the plate will bring up third down and short coming up. That'll be good. Quick instructions there to the sidelines for Jackson Dallas. Meaning to ask you about that, Brad. After this play, I'll get your thoughts on something here. It's third down and two for the Mustangs. At the 44. Okay. And Dallas at quarterback. Sweeping to the left side, Will Johnson. Johnson will have a first down. Okay. So another move of the change. Sure. Now, okay. It, yeah. And, and Brad, you know, one of the, the thing I was going to ask you is when the quarterback is going to the side before plays, and we'll take a look here at this, at this play. But yeah. Yeah, Craig, it's a couple of plays ago, just really cool. They're overloading this side right here, but they're going to pull guard and tackle away. He's going to step back and come away. Just really a great misdirection play from that, and you can see it, the whole defense shifts to that as they pull back through. And another move of the chains for West Orange Stark. So Jackson Dallas. Some movement in the line and a handoff. And that surges forward as Trey Baldwin on the tackle. Ball popped loose, but he was already down. What I was going to ask you, Brad, is when a quarterback is uh, coming over, and there's a flag now, so we'll, we'll check the flag here and see if it looked like it was encroachment on the part of the Buckeye defensive front, but here's the call. Offside, number 54 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. So, five-yard penalty. And Baldwin was ruled down. Yeah, he had an elbow down. And, like we said, the ball comes out after the elbow's down, but it was offsides anyway against Gilmer, so even if he had fumbled, it would have been nullified due to the offsides call. So now it's first and five from the 33, and here's Trey Baldwin again. This time, oh, up, and that is indeed a fumble, but Jackson Dallas quickly leaps on the football. It'll be a loss of yardage on the play. Gilmer perhaps missed out on an opportunity, Brad, ahead. A chance here as uh, Jackson Dallas 
had to hop on the football after it got loose. Yeah, he did. Big lick there by linebacker. It's a good thing Jackson had his, had his eyes up. Uh, he had to make a big play there. You know, it's, in, it's interesting. You know, we've seen two fumbles here the last play, Craig. I was riding up the elevator with, with the director of officiating this morning and does a lot of NFL work, too. And, you know, he was saying there's been conversations to try to uh, pilot uh, some type of a replay that here at the state the championships. Uh, haven't, haven't been able to get that done yet. It will cause a lot of different things for coaches, but... Uh, and, and looking at that in, at the high school level. Well, they could use it. Uh, they had, certainly have the technology and capability here at AT&T Stadium. West Orange Stark, however, has the lead after one quarter of the 4A Division II state championship. West Orange Stark with a 7-0 lead on the Gilmer Buckeyes as we begin the second quarter of the 4A Division II state championship game so where is west orange well it's west orange texas it's the consolidation of two high schools stark high and west orange high which happened in the 70s won state titles in 86 and 87 and earl thomas former all-american from the university of texas of course all pro safety for the seattle seahawks certainly one of their most famous alumni and there you look at Rounds the play, and there's some pretty impressive wins there, Brad McCoy, including the back-to-back -back wins over the law schools, Lamarck and Lagrange. Absolutely, a lot of points for and not many against. Those were back-to-back -back wins over state-ranked teams. Now Dallas on the scramble has to get rid of it, and throws it away on second down at 13. Smart play. Third, you know, 13, excuse me. You know, one of the things that pops out in those first quarter stats uh, is third down, fourth down conversions, Craig. You know, uh, West Orange had, was three of four on third down and one of one on fourth. And uh, Gilmer has yet to complete a third down or a fourth down. So that, that's a big storyline so far. So it is th third down and 13. The ball is at the 41 yard line for the Mustangs. Jackson Dallas again getting his guys to the line of scrimmage and ready to attack this Gilmer defense and before they get going Gilmer has to spend a timeout time on out. defense it yeah, looked like they had some personnel in the ballgame that they they didn't like at all 19 was trying to get off the field coach trader saw that in a hurry so early timeout here in the second quarter well, West Orange start from down in the Golden Triangle region of Texas Gilmer those Buckeyes hail from East Texas and uh, not far from the state line the birthplace of Don Henley of the Eagles fame and state championships 04 and 2009 Gilmer's road to Arlington whatever Pleasant Grove High of Texarkana beat Waco Conley Gladewater Atlanta and Salina yeah, they beat some, some pretty powerhouse teams that have been uh, here at the state finals several times themselves over the years. So third down at 13. Jeff Trailer forced to spend a time out there defensively, but feeling his defense really needs to make a stop. That's a critical time in the game right now. Of course, they've got them third and 13, so they've got them in good shape. Jackson Dallas to keep himself and sprints free. Dallas forced out of bounds near the first down right at it Devin Smith forced him out but it's enough 13 yards and a first down on a third down scramble of third 13 I tell you deceptive speed Jackson does a great job there uh, getting out makes a couple of moves had a free corner actually on him just made a great move and deceptive speed so the game clock will be put back to 11.45 to go here as the second quarter is just underway. West Orange Stark, a touchdown on their first drive. And now, trying to cash in a second opportunity here, early second quarter. Baldwin in the backfield, and it's Trey Baldwin who draws the carry. A gain of three to the 25. Cameron Granville, the tackle for Gilmer. Gilmer's really trying to move a lot on defense, you know, showing showing bump and run, stemming out, moving a lot of people around, trying to confuse Jackson Dallas. But uh, so far, he's done a great job 
depicting what he needs to do there with the ball. Brad, what I was going to ask you about earlier was Jackson Dallas quite frequently goes over to the sideline to receive the play call and conversation before sprinting back out to the field. Yeah, with no huddle, you can do that. You know, your quarterback can come get a quick instruction and get back on the field when you're not huddling. Now on second down at seven, Dallas looking to throw. Across the middle for Thompson, made the catch down to the 20-yard line, a gain of five yards as Deontay Thompson dragging across the middle and Blake Lynch held on and limited to a five-yard gain. Again, there's there's two of the best on the field going one-on-one -on -one in a man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, and, and Blake just does a good, good job running with him. Uh, makes a sure tackle for, for a short gain. Now third and two at the 20-yard line. Gilmer's defense back on its heels here, trying to stop the third down efficiency of the Mustangs, who are four out of five already in the third down department. And Dallas will throw again. Outside, caught, Baldwin with a hurdle, and a first down to the 10 yard line. <laughs> Athleticism on display for the junior slash running back wide receiver is Trey Baldwin. Takes it for nine yards and almost completely hurdled Devin Smith. And when did we start seeing that, Craig? It, it, it just seems more and more athletes are trying to hurdle with the football. Uh -huh. It's just kind of a in vogue, I guess, over the last few years. I have a feeling you probably never coached that, did you? <laughs> no, we want to stay on the ground as much <laughs> as possible. <laughs> First and ten from the 11-yard line of Gilmer. And Dallas. Green pressure. <laughs> and down he goes. Wanted to run. DeMarco Boyd not fool the junior defensive tackle on the stop. Right. He hit, you know, the West Orange was trips to the right and, and finally had did something and guessed right. Uh, you know, Blake was looking the other way and they got a, some pretty good pressure. Brought the corner off the right side. Second down. And 15 after that loss of five yards back to the 16-yard line. Dallas with an empty set now as he'll have five wide outs, including the man in motion receiving the call and around the corner inside the 15, unable to take it for a big game, but still picking up four yards was Keon Hancock. So Hancock with a gain of four, and now it's third down. And 11 needed for the first. West Orange is starting to put some different packages in the ball game. As uh, well, you saw with Keon in there at the, at the running back from a wide out in motion uh, for that little jet handoff. So they're, they're starting to get a little more into their playbook here as the second quarter unfolds. Again, Jackson Dallas sprinting to the sidelines, receiving the play call, back out quickly into the huddle and to the line of scrimmage. Jeremiah Shaw, the running back, on third down and 11. And Shaw to the air. Over the middle, the catch of the touchdown. Jerron Preston, right over the middle, reaching up to haul it in for the score. A big target there. You know, he's uh, does a great job. They don't line up a tight end much, but he's inside that slot position. Uh, Dallas kind of looked a lot to the right. He, 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 he kind of made that great play. You've seen in college a thousand times now, but he really came all the way across the formation, and uh, Dallas just gave, gave him a great throw up high where he could go up and catch. Swinging gate look on the extra point for West Orange start. And now the PAT, the point after conversion team will come on to the field. That's an interesting look right there, Craig. And they'll have to hurry to get it off, and it's a high snap. Looking to run it in to the corner and unable to get it in for the two-point conversion is Peyton Robertson, who was out there as the holder. And I don't know if it was by design. It didn't go. But it's a 13-0 lead for Dallas and the Mustangs because of this touchdown pass to John Preston. West Orange Stark out to a 13 to nothing lead on Gilmer here in the UIL 4A Division II State Football Championship. The Buckeye offense has been virtually unstoppable this season. So far today, Gilmer's offense has been stopped, Brad McCoy. 
Yeah, they're not used to being behind, Craig. You, you can tell they're a little bit frustrated right now. I think they're going to hold on and kind of get it settled in, but they're not used to being in this position. Well, we want to go down to the sidelines and check in with Aaron Hardigan down on the field. Craig, with the great pleasure of being joined by former Gilmer linebacker Josh Walker. He was a junior here in 2012 when you guys played Navasota, now at Texas A&M, and in fact, starting as a freshman. He mentioned he injured his foot here in the Missouri game last month. What sort of injury was it, and how, what's the status of that? How are you feeling? Um, I just broke my fifth metatarsal bone, and um, I got surgery on it like over a month ago, and everything's going good. I'm in rehab right now, and I'm just not getting able to you know, have a little light jog. I can't run yet, but um, everything's going good. Start as a freshman, pretty impressive at a and Very much a defensive mind for them. I have not seen anyone do this to your Gilmer offense here at all this season, really. As a defensive guy, what are you seeing out of West Orange Stark? How are they able to contain your Gilmer up? They're just dominating the line up front, being physical. And um, another thing I see that's really big for Gilmer is they eliminate our big plays. And they're dominating us up front, and we're not allowed to have explosive plays, in there, and that's what's affecting us right now. Awesome. Well, he mentioned the Gilmer offense is going to be A-OK. -okay. No worries down here, Craig. Back to you. All right. Thanks very much, Aaron. We'll see how the Buckeyes fare and incomplete pass on first down. Well, of course, as I mentioned, this is game number four of ten this weekend here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. It is game number one of a triple header. Today, the mountainous annual task of the University of Scholastic League is to stage, operate, host all of these games. And uh, so far, it's been an outstanding job by the staff of the UIL as Boyd turns the corner on second down for a carry. And of course, Dr. Mark Cousins, the athletic director of the UIL, joining us now. Have you had much sleep this weekend? Well, we got out of here about 12.30, 12.45 last night, and we got back to the hotel a little about 1, and we're back over here getting ready for this game about 9 o'clock, so uh, we'll sleep on Sunday. Yeah, this is one of those weekends where sleep definitely doesn't seem to matter uh, that much. Your impression so far of what you've seen yesterday, the crowds, huge crowds again, and, and uh, these games to this point. I mean, the the, the atmosphere that's created here at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, the job that the Cowboys organization does, welcoming the people, the spectators, the teams, and our staff, uh, it's just unbelievable great spectacle for high school football across the nation and especially here in texas mclean carter in trouble down he goes pressure coming and sacked by scott mccarty they're figuring it they're figuring it out craig they're fixing to start bringing pressure you know mark i, I want to say we've been doing this format state tournament uh, in austin for basketball for years and years and i want to i just want to compliment you for getting this venue i know i played uh, with my teams a couple of state championships in the last 10 years before we got this place and i'd give anything if we'd have been doing it back then and have more of this atmosphere yeah, I know there was a lot of uh, concern among the coaches about losing some control of the game when you put it uh, at, at a site that wasn't that they didn't choose. Right. But every coach has had an opportunity to play in this facility, and the way the atmosphere works, uh, I mean, it really is just something very exciting for the state. Uh, we, we think it's a great thing for high school football, and, and it sure is a whole lot of fun to come watch 10 state championship games in one place. It is, and it may be travel for some, but, you know, there, there's a lot of people here, a lot of coaches here. Uh, that are here they come to watch all these games at one time we're going to ask uh, dr cousins to hang with us a moment we need to take a break it's west orange stark with another stop of jet trailers gilmer buckeyes the mustangs will have the football when we come back the chip is brought to you by state farm visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state by DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best eats, treats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by Ford, the Dream Big Sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Gilmer trailing 13 to nothing, and sometimes they say time of possession is a misleading statistic. I don't think it is in this case, Brad McCoy, when you see <laughs> what the Mustangs have done with ball control. Yeah, they really, we commented on it early. They're explosive, but still 12 minutes, and uh, with only four for Gilmer, that's a tough situation. And another stop for the Mustang defense, so from the 29, Dallas to the air, caught, and big running room down the sideline for Jerron Preston. A huge gainer. He'll take it for 59 yards and a first down. Flag on the play, but Preston's played a huge role so far in this half. Ron Preston then the flag thrown downfield well after the catch and most of the run. But we'll, uh, Looks like it may be a block, a, a clip, probably downfield. It's going to nullify some of that, but still be a big first down. 
And again, the Houston chapter working this game. There is no foul on the play. First down. Well, there it is. And we're visiting with Dr. Mark Cousins, athletic director of the UIL. And, and of course, uh, we talk about the commitment of the teams, the coaches, the fans to get here. The officials, too. They, they go through a rigorous process to make sure they're here. Yeah, that's one thing. Everybody, uh, the officials always show up, and their goal is to not be noticed at all. They want to be an impartial uh, advisor and watch the game and make sure the game is played fairly and by the rules. And obviously, we couldn't play our activities without them. Uh, a lot of people that do a lot of hard work studying the rules, making sure they're up on all the current things, helping protect the health and safety safety of the kids that are playing uh, and, and a real good job done by the Texas Association of Sports Officials and our other officials associations uh, that, that put the men and women out on our courts and fields every Tuesday, Friday, and every other day that we play. Short gain there for Trey Baldwin as uh, he's met after a pickup of a yard and it's second down and nine as Gilmer tries to put the clamps on the Swiss and Stark defense. Well, we were talking right before the break about how weather sometimes has played a role and a factor in some state championship games. Obviously, it's not a factor here indoors. Brad, I know you coach two teams into state title games with each of your sons. Uh, the, uh, uh, the loss with uh, Colt and uh, Jim Ned to San Augustine and Ennis on a frigid night and then a grand losing by a, a point to Carthage at SMU on cold, chilly nights. And hand off there to Baldwin. And, you know, those are, in the past, those were some things you, you always had to kind of take into account, was it? You really did. I mean, weather is the great equalizer, and, and in both those instances, it had played into both those games. I know the night we played in Ennis, uh, you know, it was about 18 degrees in Sleeton, and uh, you know, it's just one of those times you look back and, and you go, how much did it play? I know Colt broke his thumb early in the game, that, that deal uh, on a helmet, and you know, there's just a lot of things that go into that. So you're not blaming it, the loss on the weather, but it would have sure been nice to have been in here. Well, and, and I think it's a major reason why we saw the attendance record broken here last year, Mark, because it's such a comfortable, wonderful place to take in the environment. Yeah, they do a tremendous job again with the 54,000 we had in here for that Division uh, One game last year. Uh, look, great crowds again this weekend. The weather's not so good outside, but it's a nice, nice, nice and dry inside. And uh, what a great atmosphere it's creating today. Hey, let me let me get your uh, prognostication. Does the record last year of 54,000 plus for Allen Pearland? which broke the 1977 uh, Plano, Port Natchez Groves, 49.953. West Orange Star calling a timeout. Does it? Uh, does that record of 54,000 stand a chance to be broken tomorrow? I don't know. It'll be fun to see. I mean, that's one of the great things about high school football. It's not just the teams uh, and the communities that follow. It's just a high school football fan. I mean, you look, uh, we looked at, the, we had the six-man games in here last weekend. And when we brought in over the day, I think there were about 10 or 12,000 people that came through the, the door to watch those two six-man games. There's not 10 or 12,000 people in the four towns combined. <laughs> uh, so I think it says a lot just about the football fan in Texas. You can see the communities all the orange over there and Gilmer and the gray and blue over here uh, for West Orange Stark uh, the people in their communities know how important their schools are and the programs are a lot of times the schools are the center of the community especially in these mid-range and small schools uh, and even if you go up to the larger schools like you said we'll see Allen we'll see Argonne we'll see Katy uh, those schools that are traditional powerhouses that bring just the whole community together and that's the one great thing about extracurricular activities and football in particular it really is and I can tell you another thing from the coaching side is it's it's really tough for two coaches to get together and decide where they want to play a neutral side. You know, flipping coins and all. It just it takes all that drama out of where you're going to play to know, hey, that's where we're going. This is your time slot. Get ready. Four down at seven. Out of the timeout. West Orange starting to go for it. Jackson Dallas with some time to the end zone. Deontay Thompson, the catch of the score. There you go. There, there's your good on good again. You know, you got Deontay and you got Blake. Blake, what a great double move Deontay had from the post to the corner. Blake kind of got spun around on the post and then just couldn't get back in time to get there. Uh, but that's two good players, and, and Dallas, Dallas put it right up there where he had to have it. For all of what we say, and rightly so, about Deontay Thompson on defense, you see how potent he is on offense. That's his 15th receiving touchdown of the season extra point is no good but otherwise it's been a very very good first half for west orange stark and another look at it coming up here brad 
Yeah, if, you, if you're able to, to see that, again, he runs a little post corner, a little double move, and you see Blake just got turned around to the middle of the field, made a play on it, but was just a little, a couple steps out of the way to get back to the ball. And uh, Deontay, Deontay went up and made a great catch like, uh, like a great athlete would do. Mark, before we let you go, I wanted to ask you, you know, we were talking about this site. This morning I was seeing on Fox Sports Southwest a recap of state volleyball. That was at the Curtis Caldwell Center in Garland. We know UIL state tournament basketball for the first time ever. Going to leave Austin, going to go down to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. It begs the question, is the UIL pretty much opening its doors to all of its state championships to explore other venue and city possibilities? I, I think it's something we really rely on our school superintendents to kind of tell us and direct us. We always like input from our stakeholder groups, our coaches, uh, but our school superintendents are the ones that really make those decisions. Uh, they have indicated in the past that they wanted to keep Central Texas uh, as the main hub for our activities but as things change and keep running in different conflicts and the city of Austin keeps having more and more activities and, and there are just so many good facilities across the state and so many opportunities for kids to play uh, for championships we're open uh, to listening to those things and uh, wherever we go we're gonna try to put on the best show that we can and hopefully we'll have another one here today and tomorrow as we wrap up championship weekend well you're certainly doing uh all of that as this uh, kickoff will be fielded at the seven yard line by Devin Smith. And Smith will go down at the 27. Mark, thanks for dropping by. Congratulations on another outstanding start to what should be another incredible weekend of football here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you again. All right, Dr. Mark Cousins, the athletic director of the UIL. The kickoff return by Devin Smith. It's a 19 to nothing lead for West Orange Dark. And Brad. Obviously, Jeff Trailer knows that it's getting to critical mass right now for his team. They really need to have a response here. Yeah, there, there's a mental aspect of the game right now that's crucial for Gilmer to get some things done and get something on the board. Uh, they, they, they've got to get rolling, and they may get it right now. Yeah. Turner to the right and caught by Boyd. Chris Boyd downfield just what the Buckeyes needed to try to get things turned around. A 57-yard strike. I tell you what, you know, they had to get something fast. I think Coach Trader knew the emotions uh, were a little bit low, had to get a spark. What a great call right there. So Gilmer on the move now. From the 17. Inside, boy. And down to the five for a gain of 12. Steve Timms, the junior linebacker on the tackle. But a pickup of 12 yards, it's first to go, and Gilmer going to the quick tempo now. They're much more into the wheelhouse when you do this. And outside, Boyd again to the corner, and Chris Boyd is across for the Buckeyes. Well, we said they needed something fast, and what, he got three plays? I believe they got it, they got it pretty fast. Chris Boyd. Involved in all of those. The deep route, then around the corner, up the middle, and then around the corner and in for the score. Juan Esquivel for the extra point. Low snap, but it's down, and the kick is good. Gilmer on the board and with some momentum. A quick strike drive. It took all of 28 seconds to move 72 yards in three plays. So he did, and I think, you know, we don't give McLean Carter enough credit. I know he threw the good pass early on, but uh, just some great play deceptiveness on, on the zone read there. He took the linebackers with him this play, uh, and then he just did a great job concealing what they were trying to do offensively. So, you know, the quarterback kind of went unnoticed other than one play, but did a great job leading, get him to the line of scrimmage fast, getting the plays up in the up tempo. So, so great job with, uh, from McLean there. So Gilmer, after three drives that did not yield anything, the quick drive right now. This is game one. Of course, game number two is the 4A Division I state championship. Number one, an undefeated Navasota against number two, unbeaten and sporting a 31-game winning streak, the defending state champion Argyle Eagles, whose head coach Todd Rogers is with our Neil Beasley. And coach, I've been here, done that kind of a thing. What, what do you do when, when you get back here? What do you say? Well, there's lots of unknowns that, uh, you know, that you get, you get some clarity on when you've been here before and you walk in. You kind of know what's expected. You kind of know 
what's the priorities for getting ready for uh, getting them off the bus and get them where they need to be and and who does what there's kind of division of labor when you show up here and when you show up here for the first time you don't know all those duties and responsibilities so uh, it's it's very comforting to know this year uh, what's going on and it kind of takes some of the stress off all the unknown how was this week of practice obviously everybody's you know the whole week they know what they're playing for so it's got to be good was it for you yeah pra practice was awesome and uh, not only are you, you know what you're playing for you uh, the game plan was uh, was simple this week we knew what we were supposed to be doing and the tempo and the effort and practice was absolutely amazing and the, the kids are at an all-time high for sure <laughs> awesome good luck thank you very much back to you guys Todd Rogers knows what it's all about there. Those Argyle Eagles have been here before and won the state title last year. Won 31 in a row, went 16 and 0 last year, 15 and 0 this year. They were the number two team. Gilmer, number three team. Of course, Gilmer in Division Two, like West Orange Stark. Argyle and Navasota in 4A Division One. And after that attempt of an onside kick. West Orange start with good field position. Three drives, three touchdowns for the Mustangs. And the Gilmer defense now charged with the task of trying to slow down that Mustang attack, but Trey Baldwin sweeping the corner on first down for a gain of five. Yeah, you know, Gilbert doing everything they can to take the momentum back. They had a great three-play drive and then came back with the onside kick. So I'm sure Coach Thompson uh, from West, o West Orange was telling his guys, hey, don't let them have anything cheap here. So they were completely ready for the onside. Second down and five, and Brad, you get the feelings. Final four minutes of the first half could be crucial for both sides. A West Orange start drive and a touchdown here. They're in complete command of the game. A Gilmer stop, even if they don't score, they would have to feel good about themselves going into the locker room. Absolutely, just need a stop. West and uh, there, back, and there's Baldwin, non stop. And a first down to the 35 yard line. Good, tough running by the junior. Back, Trey Baldwin picks up nine yards. I think Gilmer thought they had him down. Trey, Trey decided he wasn't going to be down right here. And there he goes. Great balance there from Baldwin. Of course, Gilmer's got to do something. Uh, West Orange has had three drives and he's had three touchdowns. So they they know uh, they did a great job offensively to take some of the momentum back. But they need to stop here before half. At the 35-yard line of Gilmer. Jackson Dallas looking over that Buckeye defense. And once more, it's Trey Baldwin. Struck out well this time by Gilmer. Still a gain of three for Baldwin. Saad Heath on the stop for the Buckeyes. Baldwin does a great job. He's, you know, he's carrying a pretty good load there. He's strong. Uh, you haven't seen him lose yardage on a tackle today. He's, he's always falling forward. You love those kind of running backs. Second down. And seven. West Orange is kind of slowing it down here. They want to use this whole clock. They know that Gilmer had a little momentum on that last offensive series. So uh, Dallas is going to the coach on the sideline every play here, and they're going to use all this 30-second clock. And if nothing else, Brad, making sure that Gilmer doesn't have another opportunity to score, whether West Orange start does or not, again to the ground. And inside the 30 is Baldwin for a pickup of four yards. It brings up third down and four. Time out. Gilmer. That is their second charge time out of the half. Now, Jeff Trailer, on the other hand, sensing the opportunity, taking the time out of here, Brad. It's a little bit of a calculated risk, but you got to hope you can get a stop, maybe have an opportunity to score before the half is done, especially as fast as their offense scores. Absolutely. You, you kind of play each, each quarter as its own little game. And so, you know, the end of this game, the end of this second quarter is coming up, and Jeff's doing a great job wanting to get that ball back. So he's probably going to have to do it twice because I'm, I would figure that West Orange is in four-down territory here. So he may have to call two to get the ball back, but he wants that ball back in the hands of his offense. On the other side of the ball, West Orange is just trying to grind it out. You're going to see two strong running plays trying to get the first down. And then, and then may, they may throw one deep in the end zone at the end if, they're, if the clock is down. But their, their main goal right now is to go into half at the worst, 19 to 7. So coming out of the timeout, it'll be third down and four from the 29-yard line. Big moment here in this first half is Gilmer with the touchdown to try to climb back. On the fringes of getting back in this football game, needing a stop here. Third down. For the Mustangs, to the ground. 
And surging forward and right at the first down marker. Trey Ball with Boyd as he runs up. And great effort. Great second effort heading by the, by the legs and up high. Just a great effort to lean and get that first down. Uh, again, he just doesn't get tackled falling backwards. The body lean going forward. And Watch his legs, he spins, and he gets that last effort yard for the first down. Or we'd have seen another time out there from Jeff. Now the clock moving. West Orange starts with its offense with a little more sense of urgency. Down to 90 seconds to go in the half. Got a wildcat back. Will Johnson to take the snap. And that's Johnson. That design run out of the wildcat set. Good blocks, another first down. Down to the 12-yard line for a pickup of 14 yards. Blake Lynch finally wrestled him down. I'll tell you what, Trey Walden's a great runner, but if you can reshow that, what a great block out of the backfield for his, for his quarterback. Uh, does a, just does a super job taking the force guy out uh, and getting that, getting that ball back up inside. Just watch, watch Baldwin as he comes. A really great kick out there. Opens that whole lane up to the outside. Uh, that's a player that, that uh, plays without the ball really well when you hear coaches talk about that. Can catch the ball, can run with it, and obviously can block. Down to the 12-yard line and down inside a minute to go in the half, and Gilmer's going to spend its final timeout. Time Gilmer, that is their third and final timeout of the half. And this changes the strategy for Jeff Trailer. Now it goes from trying to get a timeout and a stop with thoughts of maybe getting something offensively done before the first half is expired now to just holding on and keeping the Mustangs out of the end zone. Exactly. You stole a little momentum on your last offensive series, and now you've just got to, you've got to keep them out of the end zone or at least keep them to a field goal try. Uh, you know, when watching the extra points in this game, it doesn't look like they're, uh, they want to kick a field goal. Obviously, they want to score. So, you know, you're going you're gonna to see now probably another run or two by Baldwin, but a couple of shots in the end zone by Dallas. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of play action and, and give Dallas that run pass option. And, and see him do something with his feet. But uh, Gilmer and Jeff Trader, they're working their guys right now. You, hey, we've got to have a stop. We've got to be pressed. We've got to be physical. So, I, you know, they'll probably pull up into some kind of press man and try to get some quarters up, corner, uh, some, uh, uh, some, some kind of pressure off the edges. Well, coming up is the Ford Halftime Show from right here inside AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Rick Renner, Greg Tepper, and the coach, Ken Purcell, for the first half break down and a look ahead to number one against number two, Navasota and Argyle in the 4A Division I state championship. Will Johnson out of that Wildcats and looking to throw or with a lot of running room now. Johnson inside the 10 and what a cut. Johnson to score. They'll mark him just shy. It looked like Johnson got the ball across the goal line, but perhaps the knee touchdown first. Will Johnson made a great cut inside, Brad, he to really get did. it close. Yeah, great speed out there. Lowered his head. You know, obviously, if we had uh, instant, that's a touchdown. That's right. <laughs> if we were reviewing that, they'd probably give it to him. But quick, quick load up. Here we go. Yeah, that was a touchdown. It's of little consequence now because Trey Baldwin takes it across. West Orange Stark scores. 24 seconds to go in the half, and another touchdown for the Mustangs. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough, tough mental thing to overcome for Gilmer. They're going to have to get in at halftime and, and really regroup, find some emotion. For, uh, you know, Jeff Trailer's going to have a, uh, his work cut out for him for that, but he's done it before. So, again, this is an area where Gilmer just hadn't been this year being down like this. For the conversion, Hector Vela. Kick is blocked. There's this is the final ball. Oh. And uh, one of the Buckeyes just dived on it rather than try to pick it up and run with it, but settled for just having a block on it. But it's a 25 to 7 lead for West Orange Stark with 24 seconds remaining in the half. A great opportunity there missed for a couple of points. You know, we picked the ball up. Uh, Gilmer had some guys out in front. They they might have could have got two points out of that, but uh, a little bit of a little bit of a momentum to get a get an extra point blocked. And, and we got a couple of chances with Gilmer to get a run back and maybe a couple of shots at the end zone before this half is out. Marco Boyd, Devin Smith in on the block. And it will be an opportunity for Jeff Trailer and the group to regroup at the half. We take a look at this first half, our game summary, and it's West Orange Stark and a lot of West Orange Stark, Brad McCoy. 
Really is. It all starts with, with uh, Jackson Dallas, his ability to create in the backfield and run, and he's got some pretty good passing ability as well. Great protection there. Again, a great double move uh, by Deontay. Turns Blake around. Chris Boyd then brings Gilmer back. Get some on the scoreboard, but this drive here capped by the Baldwin touchdown. And there's a 25 to 7 lead here in the waiting seconds of the first half for Cordell Thompson. That was a, a drive that took almost the remaining time here in the first half. Smith, a kickoff. Got a chance. Off field. Smith still on his feet. taking it back the distance but an opportunity for Gilmer with 13 seconds to go on the half a 60 yard return on the kickoff and coach Thompson sitting over here with his assistant coaches going why did we kick that ball to that kid right then great run back you know just broke one time but again great run now we've got a shot and really the the nudge by none other than Deontay Thompson kept the return from going the distance now from the 26, and without any timeouts, for the air, incomplete. Wow. That was off three sets of hands. Trey Spencer and Blake Lynch fighting for it. Down to eight seconds remaining in the half. A lot of, lot of great pressure there. He had to let go. Uh, again, we know what's going to happen here. There's no secrets. You've got about eight seconds. You might get two plays out of this, uh, but you're going to have to get there quick. And the Buckeyes out of timeouts. Blake Carter. I will find Blake somewhere right now. Carter on the scramble. The throw and out of bounds with four seconds remaining in the half. Quinn Flewellen. And Brad, it'll give them one more shot to try to get it into the end zone. Looks like they're bringing their field goal unit in, Craig. So they, they want to try to get three out of this as, as time expires and go on with a little momentum. There we go. Set it up with Juan Esquivel. Actually, it'll be Tristan Oliveras, the left footer, to try this. A 35-yard field goal drive, and Oliveras will put it through. No, short. Had it right on target. Thompson feels this. Now you can run this back. This could be trouble. Deontay Thompson up the sidelines. And Thompson will finish it. Can you say Auburn? Good call. 100 yards. Now there is a flag down, so let's hold on to everything. Otherwise, Deontay Thompson would have a 100-yard field goal miss return. If Coach Saban is watching his Alabama recruit, he's probably saying, uh, you know, I, I kind of like this revenge a little bit. It's amazing that Thompson ran into Kayla Garrett as the two tried to field it in the end zone. But this is going to come back. What a great job waiting on blockers there. I mean, you see him just slow down, scale down, wait on his blockers. Uh, and that's, a, that's a great piece of running right now. It'll be interesting to see what this flag is. Well, Coach Thompson not happy with the call. Here is the call. During the return, illegal block in the back. On the return team, half the distance to the goal line, there will be one untimed down. All right. Now, there's a couple of things at play here. First of all, a look at it. And, Brad, watch Trey Baldwin here on the left side of your screen. Going for the block. Well, that's close. Yeah, you, can, you just you just have to watch the head, and that's what those officials are over. If the head is in front of the shoulder pad, it's a legal block. If that head gets behind, it's illegal. So both coaches are kind of you know upset. I know Chris Thompson's upset about that, but really a, a close call. Probably actually got it right. I feel like the official was on top of that. Okay. All right. So there you have that. Now the penalty then moves the path the distance back to the goal line. And one last play, and Jackson Dallas will just take the knee. And West Orange Stark will take an 18-point lead into the locker room. I get the feeling on the last play of the half here, 
Brad, that neither side's happy. West Orange Circuit's an 18-point lead, but they thought they should add more. And Jeff Trailer obviously knows his team's in trouble. He does. You know, Jeff is, is thankful, obviously, for that for that callback. Uh, he knows he's got some work to do, really more mentally right now uh, than physically with with Jeff uh, Trailer and and Gilmer. It's, it, they've got to get their spirits back. They've got to get back up. They're doing some good things. Uh, they just got to finish. And, and on the West Orange side, uh, all the momentum is going back. They're going to be upset about that, but they'll they'll do a good job getting ready. Let's go down to the sidelines. Head coach Cornell Thompson with our Aaron Hardigan. Very composed, too, guys. Hey, your defense was the story, obviously, coming into today. Holding Gilmer scoreless in the first, but this offense, unbelievable scoring on all first four drives. How do you explain what you're doing to these unbeaten Buckeyes? Our kids come mentally ready to play. His first half was fun, but that 24 minutes is gone. This second half, we got to do it again. Got to repeat it. But we came ready to play. I can't get Gilmer ready to play. I can get West Orange talking. Our kids are rising to the case. Message at the half. To, excuse me? Message to these boys at the half to well, make sure of that. We got, we got to get the kicking game straightened up now. We screwed that up real bad about two or three times. That right there, so called block in the back. That right down there, and on the end zone down there. So we got to straighten that out right Coach, now. Coach, appreciate it. Best luck in the second half. Thank, Thank you. you. Never satisfied, guys. Hey, Western Stark leading unbeaten Gilmer 25 7 at the break. Reaction from the first half action coming up next on the Ford Halftime Show. Team in Arlington of the 4A Division II State Football Championship of Texas. West Orange Stark with a 25 7 lead on the Gilmer Buckeyes here at the half. Gilmer, of course, undefeated coming in, but West Orange Stark has done it with the all was advertised defense, Brad McCoy, and then some punishing running on offense. I'm telling you, their defense has been really, really good. Uh, they're just not, they're just not letting like, Gilmer have very much. And obviously, we've talked about the running backs going forward all day long. They're just not losing very much yardage. And Trey Ball would have a lot to do with that in the first half, Brad. Trey's a tough runner, always falling forward, very, very strong, powerful, quick, and, and just has really ignited their offense. Trey Baldwin with the hurdle there and a big part of what West Orange Stark did in the first half. And again, as we mentioned, tough running, finishing the last drive into the end zone for the touchdown. We take a look at the four and a half time stats here and you see where West Orange Stark has dominated, especially at time of possession. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the rushing yards are way over and the time of possession is there. Again, when you look at third down conversion, seven of nine uh, to Gilmer's 0 for 3. That's the big story in the game right now. 25 to 7 is the score. Let's go down to the field and check in with Aaron Hardigan. So 25 to 7 is the halftime score here. And not many penalties in this first half, although one nullified what would have been a 100-yard return of the missed field goal. Really did. That was huge for both for both teams to see how they come back off of that momentum. But again, when you when you look at 16 first downs to just five, Gilmer just has not got off the bus yet. Uh, they've just really got to get untracked. I know Coach Trailer has really been working on them mentally, emotionally at half to, to try to get them back in it. 39 first downs or 39 plays run for West Orange Stark to just 19 plays run for Gilmer. At the half, it's West Orange Stark with a 25 to 7 lead on Gilmer. Not 30, not 20, just 10. Successful. You've got to be able to control your mind at all times, your effort, your attitude, and be willing to do what it takes to get the job done. Then, then you'll be state champions and take the trophy home to your community and the players and the coaches can celebrate. It's all about what you do on that field if you want to be state champions. A Grant Taff, a Texas coaching legend, no doubt about it. So get ready to start the second half. And of course, Coach Taff, thanks to Coach Taff, thanks to all the great people, Jay Black and the great people, the Texas Sports Hall of Fame for uh, their help in bringing you some of these outstanding moments and vignettes and the uh, High School Hall of Fame jerseys that are there in the uh, High School Hall of Fame there in Waco. It's a great place to go and to, to see the history of high school football as well as what's all great about sports in Texas at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Exactly, and a new CEO there, uh, Jared Mosley, just took over there as, uh, as the new CEO of at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, and I know he'll do him a great job. All right, let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Aaron Hardigan. 
Hey, thanks, Craig. Was able to catch up with Coach Trailer there at the break. And I mentioned you guys really haven't trailed since Alito last season. He, ex he corrected me, essentially said they did trail a bit in Gladewater. So one this season. And I asked him what his message was to his players with this now, the situation. And he said, really, we just going, we have to go back to playing Gilmer football. Go back to the fundamentals. Fundamentals always win. So again, as uh, Josh Walker said there in the first half, not worried at all about Gilmer here in the second, guys. Thank you, Aaron. They certainly do have the capability, the weaponry, and uh, the firepower to be able to rally in the second half. But in addition to having uh, all the capability, Brad, they've got to find a way to execute, like you said, they did, and to, to use the coaching metaphor, like you said, they've had trouble just getting off the bus. They really have. Craig, you know, we haven't talked about this a lot, but, you know, Gilmer had a, had a, had a really big tragedy last year. One of their kids, a kid named Desmond Pollard, uh, who was a great player last year for them, uh, had over 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns receiving, uh, passed away playing a, a pickup game uh, last spring uh, in March. And they've really dedicated this year to Desmond. Uh, he, actually, Coach Trailer has coached four of the Pollard boys uh, throughout the years. Uh, Devaney, Darius, and Darian. Actually, Darian plays for Rice and is uh, headed towards a bowl game today. So uh, they, this, this season has really been dedicated uh, to Desmond. They've all got number eight. And so, uh, uh, you know, they've, they've got to get over that emotion and, and uh, be ready to play this second half. Here's the kickoff from Gilmer and West Orange start ready to go right back to work. Kickoff fielded by Dee Wolford. And again, the Mustangs can have good field position, a 12-yard return. And uh, the Mustangs made the most of their possessions in the first half. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that at the end of the half. They had to have a stop to get a little momentum and just could not get that done. Dallas uh, took a, did a great job, Jackson Dallas, getting them down with that last score. But uh, it'll be interesting. They, they need a stop here this, as the second half begins. Ball at the 39-yard line. And that's where the Mustangs will operate. And Gilmer's defense charged with a responsibility, coming up with a stop, something they have not had to this point in the game. Jackson Dallas leading them back to work. To the ground. And a brief gain short on first down. A little different look there. Came out in a little, little pistol formation that we hadn't seen a whole lot of in the first half. So uh, we'll see if uh, see if they're going to have some kind of a different wrinkle this half. I know Coach Thompson's a great, great halftime statistician, and he'll have some new looks for Gilmer this half. Second down and nine after Edwards picked up a yard. Now Baldwin back in the backfield. And he slammed hard to the turf. Excellent play on the ball made by Dakota Williams to knock him down. Again, Dakota made several plays in the first half at that nose tackle position. He's, he's splitting double teams. Uh, it's a tough position to play in a three down front because he's going to get a center and one of the other guards every time. So uh, he's had some great penetration. Did a great job that time. Third down and seven. From the... 42-yard line of West Orange start. Opening moments here of this second half. Moving in the line. This time it's going to cost the Mustangs five yards. I believe Paul Ebear, the right tackle, leaned in. Yeah, Gilmer was, was stemming into a, more of an even front. Uh, defensive end was sliding down and just got a little bit of movement out of that start. tackle. Number 73 in the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. So now, after the ball start, it's third down and 12, back of the 37-yard line. Probably Dallas Jackson time, would you think? Well, he is, he has been equal to the task, Mr. Dallas. Jackson Dallas to the air now. Swinging it out to Baldwin with running run. Baldwin. And a first down across midfield. Uh, pick up a 14 yards, but you're right when you look at it, Brad, because Jackson Dallas set it up, the screen to Trey Baldwin for 14 yards. He really did. If you look at him give ground here, just he does a great job getting to that fifth step and then giving a little more ground to really draw those defensive players to him and open up uh, those running lanes for Trey Baldwin. So, again, uh, 
Jackson is doing a great job executing this offense. At the 48-yard line of Gilmer, the Buckeyes have just been reeling since the opening minutes here. Baldwin to the ground again. Trey Baldwin rumbling through the Buckeye defense before Blake Lynch could finally wrap him up 17 more yards and another Mustang first down. You know, it's just it's disheartening for Gilmer to get them in a third and long, third and 13, and can't keep them, uh, can't get their defense off the field. Again, that's that's eight of 10 now, third down conversions uh, for the Mustangs, and that's a phenomenal conversion rate. Kelton Collier had to hobble off the field for Gilmer. Another first down for West Orange start, and the Mustangs continue the relentless assault on the Gilmer defense. Now out of the Wildcats, set Will Johnson. Tristan Oliveira has forced him out of bounds. And I'm sure Jeff Trailer talked to his team about this. You heard Aaron Hardigan say we got to get back to playing Gilmer football. And what that also means in, this, in addition to what they do offensively, Brad, is get some stops on defense. They're going to have to do it if they're going to get back in this game. They really do, Craig. It's, it's, it's imperative that they, that they get a stop, get a field goal attempt, something on this drive uh, because the Mustangs have all the momentum right now. Jeremiah Shaw is the running back now for West Orange Stark on second down. A handoff to Shaw. And he's brought down excellent play made by DeMarco Boyd, the defensive tackle to bring it down. No gain. And here comes that dirty word <laughs> term for the Gilmer defense. Third down for West Orange Stark. I'm telling you, they they, they have been uh, snake bit here on these third downs. Third and, third and eight here. Uh, you know, they just need to stop get off the field and this may be four down territory again uh, But they need to stop on third down just to give us some confidence West Orange start Eight out of ten on third downs this afternoon Shaw the running back Jackson Dallas with a lot of time to throw Picked off over the middle Jackson Sykes and the first real break of the day for the Buckeyes comes on the interception. Yeah, that's really the, the first mistake that Jackson Dallas has made all day. He really kept his eyes on Trey Spencer, number two, ran a little curl comeback. Uh, he had a lot of room in the flat, could have done some things with his feet there, uh, but he just never let his eyes leave, uh, and that corner drifted back inside. So really the first first error from, from Jackson Dallas and maybe an opportunity for Gilmer. Now can the Buckeyes do something with it? They'll start from their own 25. Wayne Carter got a difficult first half. Out of an empty set, leads the Buckeyes to the line of scrimmage. That's dropped by Boyd, who didn't drop much in the first half. He scored Gilmer's only touchdown, but could not hold on to that. You've seen it countless times in your coaching days, Brad, where the player's thinking about moving it upfield, the eye shift upfield before the ball is secured. That's exactly right. You gotta catch it before you can do anything else with it. You know, Buckeyes really got to get McLean and, and Blake Lynch together, and that's been their that's been their go-to combination all year. Well, the swing pass this time, and Boyd upfield for a short gain. Actually turned it into six yards before he was wrapped up, bringing up third down, an important third down here for the Buckeyes. We talked about West Orange Stark on third downs. Well, Gilmer 0 for three on third. And five, the catch, and Nick Smith, senior wide receiver on the opposite side of the field. Takes us up near the 40-yard line for a first down. Trey Spencer, the tackle, the first third down conversion of the afternoon for Gilmer. Yeah, that's uh, that's big for them to get that, but it they just had not been used to not having that till the second half. Out to the 40-yard line for the Buckeyes. And Carter looking to go to the air again, the double move. Looking down the sidelines for Smith again and unable to come up with it as he was covered tightly by Malik Phillips, the sophomore safety on the opposite side from where Deontay Thompson is roaming. Yeah, you know, you, you never know what strategies. Uh, you know, we've got two great players in this game, both committed to Baylor and Alabama. Deontay Thompson uh, is on Blake Lynch now, one on one, and, and Gilmer's really gone away from Blake, and they really need to go back and challenge that. Second down. Set up the screen this time to Blake Lynch. Blake Lynch 
just as Brad McCoy told you, had to get it going, and he does. Upfield, the pass from McLean Carter to Blake Lynch goes for 41 yards before Malik Phillips can force him out. Great little tunnel screen, got Blake coming back inside. Uh, some great blocking on the outside. His tackle getting out, just looking for some great offensive line downfield, but that's their key. They've got to get that combination. The first down, and now Gilmer on the move back to the ground to Boyd. Chris Boyd inside the 15, down to the 13, a gain of five. Touchdown here would help Gilbert in its efforts to climb back in this football game. Sophomore linebacker Justin Brown, the tackle for West Orange Stark. On second down and five. Carter lofting it in the end zone for Smith and the score. Nick Smith. The touchdown for Gilmer. What a great play execution there. He looked great to look at that little play fake. Brought the corner up. Smith was able to run by the safety. Just the play fake, just the run uh, threat. Brought cornerback safety up and gave a great passing lane uh, for McLean. Did a great job laying in the back of the end zone. Super design. For the conversion, Juan Esquivel, he handles the extra points. It's Oliveras who tries the field goal. And Gilmer make sure they, making sure they have everyone set now for the conversion. The kick is good for Esquivel. A crucial drive for Gilmer to help the Buckeyes get back in this football game. McLean Carter to Nick Smith. And now a special message from Dairy Queen. So you're well, you see a little infusion of energy into the Buckeye sideline as Gilmer's touchdown pulls the Buckeyes to within 11. McLean Carter, the senior quarterback, trying to get the fans behind it as well as Gilmer has rallied, trailing 19 0 and then 25 7. Now at 25 14, Buckeyes attempted an onside kick in the first half, it did not work. West Orange Stark wound up scoring a touchdown. Let's see what the call is here. As we approach the midway mark of the third quarter, West Orange Stark playing returners up the field all the way up to the 25 yard line, including Deontay Thompson, who's up around the 35. This kick will go deep and right over the head, but in the field of play, picking the ball up is Wolford, and Wolford in trouble. Other than a turnover, you probably couldn't ask for a better way to have a kickoff. No, I'm telling you, they, they have got a little momentum on their side. It started with a great touchdown before the play. Uh, it, just a great point that they, that they brought about, really using play action to make some great things happen. If you look at this play on the touchdown, great play action here from the quarterback. This guy's going to come. Now, the, the responsibility of this safety is to get back, but he sees play fake and comes forward and just gets a little hesitation to run right by. You'll see what the play action does. In for the score, and Gilmer climbing back into it. Now with an opportunity with West Orange Stark pinned deep in its own end of the field to bolt with hit hard, lost the football. Touchdown, Gilmer. Oh, oh Mr. Momentum has changed. It's, it's found its way to the Gilmer sideline. Devin Smith. With help from DeMarco Boyd. And the Buckeyes are right close now. Boyd separating the football, Brad, and Devin Smith with the recovery in the end zone. It's a great job. You know, first, it starts with the kickoff. You know, a great kickoff coverage gets it to the five, puts West Orange in a position where they don't really want to be, and then a great penetration. Now an opportunity to pull to within four. For the conversion, Juan Esquivel. Flag down. But this is an entirely different football game now. Craig, it just shows you how much coaching is other than X's and O's. You know, we, we look at it all the time. You knew what kind of 
momentum went into the locker room. You heard Coach Thompson say at halftime, Offside. hey, that first half is over. Defense. We've got to do something different. We've got to come back and win the second half. Point we talked good. about Coach Trailer going in and having to regather his troops more emotionally and mentally than physically. And now you've seen what's happened. You know, the totally dominant team from West Orange Start comes back out a little bit loose, and Gilbert comes back on fire. Only one network is big enough to cover the great state of Texas. And only one show travels across the state to get the skinny on high school sports every week, all year long. You want the best in high school sports? Catch high school sports. As you look on the sidelines at DeMarcus Boyd, who helped change the momentum with the big hit on Trey Baldwin to cause the fumble. Recovered by Devin Smith for the score. And all of a sudden, what was a 19 to nothing lead at one point and an 18 point halftime lead at 25 to 7 is now a four point game. Another deep kickoff, but this one's going to sail out of bounds. Sure, Coach Trader won't be happy about that. That's, that's, that's a tough one to, to take. It's uh, a little bit different. I don't know what uh, West Orange has seen in, in Gilmer's kicking game, but they, you know, they're really, their deepest back is at 20 yards, so maybe they've seen something. That he's not going to kick it deep to him, but that's an interesting way to line up. You know, uh, kick out of bounds on the kicking team. By rule, West Orange is elected to take the ball at the 30-yard line. First down. So the Mustangs on their own 30-yard line to start this possession. And Cornell Thompson has seen the script get flipped a little bit. Now will try to get his offense back in gear. Back-to-back -back possessions with turnovers after four touchdowns. And here's another bad snap, and Jackson Dallas can only fall on it. I'm telling you, that, that front three for, uh, for Gilmer is just wreaking habit up there. You know, Dakota Williams again at the nose tackle. Uh, really has caused some problems for the center, made him have two bad snaps. And, and you just really got to keep your eye on DeMarco Boyd, number five, playing that left defensive end. He has slowly, through this game, uh, taken on a dominant role. They're running away from him. Uh, he is doing an incredible job of running back. They got playing defensive line. They're lined up in different places, and, and he is having to be dealt with. He's slipped up to the right side now. Gilmer fans really into it, making a lot of noise. A loss of 12. And out of the Wildcats set. Johnson will go down. A loss of three more. DeMarco Boyd, maybe the most fired up player on the field right now. He really is, Craig. And they're moving him around. The Gilmer's, I mean, uh, West Orange is trying to run away from him, but they don't know where he's going to be every time. But uh, that young man is taking this game over defensively, and, and they can't deal with him right now. Third and 25 for West Orange start. Gilmer fans chanting defense and making all the noise down. Ball for the running back. Jackson Dallas to the air. A lot of time to go deep and punt. Great leaping grab by Keon Hancock. They needed 25. The Mustangs pick up 50. What a throw by Justin Dallas. He put it in between three Buckeye defenders right on the money. That's as good as it can be done. And that's a way to take a little take a little of that momentum back right there. Great throw, great catch. Had a lot of time. You know, they brought in an extra defender. Keon Hancock with a catch. He's at the 36-yard line of Gilmore. And now back to Baldwin on the ground. No gain. Gilmer still tough against the run so far here in the second half. Kevin Smith, Cameron Granville on the stop. Heading toward the late stages of the third quarter. Two touchdowns for Gilmer, two turnovers for West Orange start. But now the Mustangs on the move with the big pass to Keon Hancock. Second and ten. Jackson Dallas to the air again. Up the sideline. Incomplete. 
looking for Deontay Thompson. He was looking for a flag. Not coming at its third down and ten. Great coverage there. Deontay did it, had a great double move again. He had to adjust the ball. Dallas did a little bit more outside. I think Deontay felt like he's going to go more to the end zone. A uh, little bit of adjustment. Just a little bumping in there. Official said that's okay. Third and ten. From the 36. in the backfield. Dallas to the shotgun. And there's the screen. And Gilmer was looking for it, but ball would break three anyway. Not enough for the first down, but still a gain of six. And it's fourth and four at the 30-yard line. Yeah, it's, it's, it's typical. You, you look at what Coach Thompson thinks his bread and butter is, a running play, a running game. Goes back with those screen. They executed really well, missed a tackle. Uh, but now big, uh, a big uh, decision. I don't think they want to kick anything, so you're probably going to see a fourth and four try here. And I would say it's Trey Baldwin time. Cameron Brando lost a shoe and had to put that back on. West Orange start two for two on fourth down to this ball game. They go for it on fourth and four. Dallas to the end. Drops. Open. Will Johnson couldn't hold it. And it'll go over on downs for the Buckeyes. Tough, tough drop for that young man. I know he's working really hard. He was too open. Uh, you know, just, just tried, his, just took his eyes off it. Kind of unusual. They had DeMontre Hurst, uh, excuse me, De DeMontre Thompson one-on-one -on, -one on the other side uh, away from Blake. So I was a little surprised they didn't go that direction, but great stop for the Buckeyes. So it's at the 30-yard line. Gilmer has had two possessions. Well, really a possession and then a fumble recovery for a score. Now they go back to work on offense. And boy, off a fake pass and a quick draw back on the counter of the opposite side for a gain of six. Dustin Brown, Trey Baldwin on the tackle. A good first down gainer for Gilmer. Second down and four. McClay Carter. Relaying the instructions up and down the line. And looking to throw. With time going deep. And wide open, but just beyond the reach of Blake Lynch. Would have gone for 64 and a score. Really unusual. I think Blake wasn't sure where the ball was. He looked up. Great pickup in the backfield. But uh, McLean put that right where he needed to be. And looked like Blake wasn't sure where the ball was coming. But again, in this big house right here, it's hard sometimes to pick up the ball if you've never played in it. Third and four. Mel Jackson in the backfield. The pass caught and a first down. The catch by Quint Fluellen, a gain of eight. Well, that's great trust in your receiver. McLean knew a spot. He knew exactly where McClellan was going to be. He put it right on that inside shoulder pad. That's a, that's a lot of trust in your receiver knowing where he's going to have that stop. Out to the 44-yard line and a first down for Gilmer. Buckeyes on the move again. Let's start and start. Big pass play and a drive, but did not convert on fourth and fourth to 30. Now, quick screen outside. This one to Chase Tate. But it only works for two yards. As Justin Brown struck it out well. Man, watch how far Justin Brown covers. They got a diamond formation out there. Justin Brown from his inside backer position all the way out to make that tackle on the outside of that hash. Great, great effort from that linebacker. Second down and eight for Gilmer. Boyd, the man in the backfield for the Buckeyes. And now Carter will run. Pop pretty hard, but goes down after a pickup of four. Will Johnson the tackle now. Third down and four coming up for the Buckeyes. That nemesis, they had a couple this last drive. They need to continue that. Uh, McLean wasn't sure. He, he wasn't sure whether to try to get that first down or slide. He kind of got hung up in the middle of that. Uh, but you don't want to take those big licks a whole lot. Third and four for midfield. Boy. Sweeping around the end and picks up the first down. A gain of 10, call it 11, all the way to the 39-yard line for the senior running back, Chris Boyd. 
great job following his blocks. Again, you can just see the the uh, ignition over there on the Gilmer sideline in their bench, and they, they feel what's going on right now. From the West Orange, start 39 on first and 10. Carter under pressure. He'll go down. Loss of a yard. Was trying to set up the double move, Brad, and the pressure was able to get in on him and make the making the tackle is Joshua Arabo. Yeah, Josh defeated that block rate. And they, and they had it. You know, they had the double move on it, but he just didn't have time to get to it. Now on second down and 11. And a false start is going to cost Gilmer five more. Chris Boyd went in motion a little quick. You know, the, the problem with that, if he were just kept going. Brian, it's now. False start. 25 on the offense. I don't have it. Repeat second half. They called on 25. I thought they were going to call on board. If he just keeps that motion going and not go forward, it's not a penalty. But it looked like it. Uh, everybody just kind of jumped with him. Big play. Chase Tate was the man identified, but you're right. Others who go on with him. Now it's second down at 16 for the Buckeyes. Carter to the air and caught holding on to the football Quinn Flewellen 15 yards near a first down brings up third down at one for Gilbert great throw by McLean he had Quinn on that stop route just almost enough for the first down but a great route Quinn ran a great stop route tried to get to that first down mark but brings back a short third down now the Buckeyes need a yard at the Mustang 30 Carter looking to throw on third and one. Does and caught by Flewellen. On third and one, the Buckeyes pick up 11 and a first down. Great, great uh, blocking, pass blocking there. No, no time at all. Uh, and I heard it just ran that route a little short. Time out. West Orange. Flewellen just first charge, out of the house. ran that route just a little bit shorter than the last time, but a great protection from the front line of Gilmer. Grant, an interesting timeout called by Cornell Thompson here as you get another look at the route off the play action. As you can just see, it's just a, they just built a wall around McLean in there. Uh, even had the back play action on the backside with no penetration. So, a uh, tremendous job there. And when you got a, a receiver like Fluell, and I'm not sure his size, he looks like he's about 6'4". Uh, yeah, 6'2", uh, and it has a big target to throw it to. So uh, they, the last two plays um, on third and long, or second and long, have gone to Fluell, and both times they found something over there away from away from Blake now that's working. Brad, let me ask you about this timeout. Cornell Thompson elected to take a timeout. We're going to be due the end of the quarter break coming up here in 16 seconds, but, but I guess sometimes the coach feels can't wait any longer. You got to make sure and try to keep the other team out of the end zone. Yeah, you know, Greg. One of the one of the reasons we have timeouts is for momentum stops. And and I think uh, Coach Thompson just felt like right now there was a huge momentum stop, and, and we don't want him throwing the end zone right now. So get his team up a little bit to have a great couple of plays here to the end of the half and going to the fourth quarter uh, in good shape. So on first and ten, the ball at the 19 yard line of West Orange Dark Gilmer. Trying to take it in for his first lead of the day after trailing by as many as 19. McLean Carter actually Lynch on that direct snap. And Lynch takes it down to the 14-yard line, a pickup of five. Lee Phillips got on the edge to force him out of bounds. You need to watch that because you had McLean out here to receiver running a reverse uh, as the quarterback. So I'm going to bet sometime today you see that whole look again. Um, with Blake pitching that ball back to McLean, and he's going to hit uh, Flewellen on something on that backside. It's a great formation. McLean Carter back in at quarterback. And this time to the ground, the boy. Boy shaking off a couple of tacklers and will settle for a four yard carry to the 10. It'll be third down and one. That is the end of the third quarter. When we begin the fourth quarter from AT&T Stadium in Arlington. What a third quarter for the Gilmer Buckeyes. Climbing back into this football game and now down only four and looking for their first lead on the 4A Division II State Championship. Southwest crew, what a ball game. 
West Orange Stark jumped down to a 19 0 lead. They led by 18 at the half, 25 7. Three missed extra points, however, by the Mustangs. We'll see if it comes back to be a factor. Gilmer looking for its fourth touchdown and an opportunity to take its first lead of the day. They'll have third down and one now from the 10 yard line. Chris Boyd has the first down. And he'll take it down to the six-yard line. A gain of four. Octavius Cross on the tackle. But the Buckeyes will have first and goal at the West Orange Stark six-yard line. Great, great play concept. I think you're going to probably see that again pretty quick with McLean keeping that ball. Defense really flowed with the running back. So that zone rate may be coming back to quarterback pretty quick. From the Mustang six. First and goal. Boyd again. Inside the four, close to the three. Trey Baldwin, Steve Timms, the tackle for West Orange Stark. A little more clock than he used right here. They've been going quick tempo down near the goal line. Some prior touchdowns, but now Brad Benson taking a little more time, making sure of the play call. Got Blake Lynch back in at quarterback in the Wildcat formation. So Lynch out of the Wildcat set for the Buckeyes. Will keep it himself. Lynch! Touchdown! Gilmer takes its first lead of the day. Again, we, we, we talked about the concept of the, of the zone read. They just brought Lynch in and McLean out, ran the same jet sweep motion, and then kept on the zone sweep, uh, excuse me, on the zone read right up the gut. Great play call, great effort and run, great blocking by the offensive line. And Brad, now we're seeing what Cornell Thompson got to warn us about at the half, the kicking game difference here. Each team has scored four touchdowns. The West Orange start has failed to convert three point after tries and for the Buckeyes they're four for four and they hold a three point lead with just under 11 minutes to play amazing comeback Great Jeff football. trailer seeing his guys fired up and it's been an emotional week and it's been an emotional several months for the Gilmer Buckeyes Brad with uh, even to the point of pulling out of town, left stopping to pay tribute to an ex and fallen teammate. You see the jersey. You can see the jersey. They're holding up number eight. They've all got T-shirts on under their shoulder pads. Talking about Desmond Pollard. Desmond was a sophomore with 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns last year. Uh, tragically died in a, in a basketball pickup game. Fell over and, and they couldn't revive him. And it's just been a tough year. Jeff Trailer had talked to him this week. is just very emotional. Uh, his brother, Darian, who plays for Rice, actually tweeted uh, uh, before the funeral for his little brother. Said, the Lord must have needed a goal line receiver in his holy team because in the red zone, my little brother was money. Ball out, young soldier. So, you know, it's just it's an emotional thing. These these guys, Jeff Trailer took them to the cemetery yesterday and, and uh, had a get-together at, uh, at Desmond's grave site before the bus pulled out of town. And, and so I, I think a lot of that emotion probably hurt them early in the game, but it's coming back to fuel them right now. So just a great story and compassion about kids and taking care of teammates. Well, Gilmer has had its response. Now, can West Orange Stark respond? The Mustangs had all the momentum and virtually all the offense in the first half. It has switched here in the second half. He called Fielder at the 14 yard line by Will Johnson. Johnson across the 30 and up to the 33. Let's go down to the sidelines to Aaron Hardigan. Guys, as you mentioned, obviously very difficult visiting that grave side of the fallen teammate Desmond Pollard on the way in. Des may have been, though, what sparked this second half. Coach reminded them at the half, Des has been what's fueled this group all season long, and the game of football was taken from him. You still have it, he reminded them. So go back to why you're here, why you began playing this game. Love the heck out of it, and let's get back to Gilmer football, the football we've known all year long. A very beautiful message to those guys. Thank you, Aaron. From the 33-yard line, Jackson Dallas, big pursuit, picked up a huge block, and is able to connect with Trey Baldwin. 
Baldwin with a catch. It's a 22-yard gain. And Brad McCoy, the block, helped make it possible for Jackson Dallas to connect with Trey Baldwin. You really did, Craig, and you, knew, you saw who the block was on. Number five, DeMarco Boyd. They are coming. They know they have to account for him somewhere. So on that particular play action, they had somebody on DeMarco specifically because they knew he was going to be there. Ball is at the Gilmer 44-yard line. Baldwin has to get a breather. Jeremiah Shaw into the backfield for the Mustang. Dallas. The time now being pressured. And does the smart thing and gets rid of the football. It really was. They wanted to set up a little a tunnel green look like, and it's probably a really smart thing that uh, Jackson Dallas got rid of the ball for. He had a couple of linemen downfield, so uh, I think he knew he couldn't go downfield deep with that ball. Brad, so much has changed about Gilmer's pressure on the quarterback and winning the line of scrimmage here in the second half. It really has. If you've seen that, again, DeMarco Boyd has come alive at 77. And, you know, as we've been talking about him all, all night long at Dakota Williamson. So they're starting to really control the line of scrimmage. Uh, maybe, maybe a uh, fatigue factor may come into play. Jeremiah Shaw, the carry, Dakota Williamson, the aforementioned huge defensive tackle. Holds Shaw to a mere one yard. Dakota does a great job. And again, the beneficiaries from this are those three linebackers. Those guys have the ability now to run sideline to sideline, ball to ball, because those three defensive tackles, defensive ends up front for Gilmer are controlling line of scrimmage three on five. It allows those linebackers to really get a run and clean things up. But Williamson is doing an amazing job defeating double teams. Safe to say this is the most important third down situation of the game. Third and nine at the 43. With Gilmer having all the momentum. West Orange dropped on the move, but that pass caught by Baldwin for no gain. And it's fourth down. And if you're Cornell Thompson, what do you do here on fourth and nine? I think you got to punt it. Uh, I think you have to be smart. Punt the ball, try to let your defense play. They've, they've done a good job all night. Uh, again, you know, Jackson Dallas had to get rid of that ball. He didn't want to throw it short like that, but uh, David Bundage, that other defensive end, was really putting great pressure, and he had to get rid of it. Baldwin steps back in the punt formation. If he indeed kicks the ball, this will be the Mustangs' first punt of the afternoon. And he will punt it. Will Pooch kick right over the fumble the football loose, still loose on the turn. And Gilmer gets a break back on the ball. And it was Quinn Fluellen who fell on it as it ricocheted around. <laughs> Chase Tate ran up on the ball and couldn't control it. And it very nearly cost the Buckeyes, cost them some field position, but they'll keep the football. Absolutely. Craig, you notice these teams that, that are average 50, 60 points a game, their punt team is just not that polished. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be Gilmer football when we come back. 8.38 to go in the 4A Division II State Championship. As the UIL Texas State High School Football Championships are brought to you by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by Ford, the Dream Big Sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Gilmer back on offense after forcing the punt. 21 third quarter points, putting the Buckeyes in front for the first time in the afternoon. Chris Boyd, lost the football. Looks on the turf, still a scramble. And it looked like the Buckeyes again got on the loose ball. It was Chris Boyd. Boyd did a great job digging that out. Yeah, I, th I thought, uh, I thought that Blake Lynch had the best opportunity. He come off, he came off of it, and uh, Boyd was able to beat Johnny on the spot right there. Lost it. A scramble. Lynch had it. Lost it, and somehow Boyd got back on the loose ball. A loss of four. And it's second down. Carter to the air. The screen to Lynch. Here goes Lynch. And 
there he goes. Blake Lynch finally run down by Deontay Thompson. But that's a huge gainer. And Lynch, perhaps cramping up, had to crawl to the sidelines, and that helped Thompson get over to run him down. And it still goes for 66 yards. Second time they had a big play on that tunnel screen. The, the guard and tackle did such a great job getting out front and getting on the safety and corner there. Uh, it's a shame. It's kind of saw Blake pull up there before he got tackled. I hope it's not a hamstring. Uh, but just a great job of execution, especially by offensive linemen. Well, you're hoping that that's only a cramp that they're working all with Blake Lynch. Meanwhile, after a 66-yard gain, first and 10 for the 34. And now it's back to Boyd. And Boyd hit and lost the ball, but out of bounds. Here's another look at the, the pass. Hey, watch, these, watch these linemen come out. You see them coming downfield block here, here, here. Just great. That's that's an offensive guard and tackle getting down, blocking downfield at about 15 yards. That's what makes the play go. And then you see Blake Lynch reach back, perhaps toward the hamstring. And uh, we, hope, we hope that nobody pulls a hamstring out here, but uh, what a great play that was. Six yard gain for Boyd, and it's second down and four for Gilmer. Carter to Nick Smith. Smith picking his way through traffic, and he'll have a first down. Looked like it might only go for a yard or two. Winds up being an eight yard catch and run and a move of the chains for the Buckeyes. Again, Coach Trailer is really using that flat ball, bubble screens, tunnel screens, uh, taking advantage of this West Orange defense. It's kind of on its heels right now. Down to the 22-yard line, and you see the game marching toward the midway mark of the final quarter. A touchdown for Gilmer here would be gigantic. The uh, two-possession game, and here's Boyd. A turn the corner, takes a hard lick, and he's out of bounds. Justin Brown popped it, but it's a pickup of seven more yards. Boyd does a great job getting to the corner. Uh, it seems like this Gilmer team is probably getting better. You know, their, their condition seems to be really well right now. They're, they're operating at a high level, and uh, West Orange has to find a way to stop this and get off their heels. Second down and three for the 15. Boyd again. This time hit and dropped after a gain of only a yard, if that. Scott McCarty and Del Turner King knock him off his pins. Really, in essence, no gain on the play, and it's third down coming up. Getting a little punchy out there. Both, both coaches on sidelines are, are, are really wanting something called. I haven't seen that, but it's getting, it's getting pretty competitive out there in that trench. Third down and three for the Buckeyes. At the 15, and Lynch back in the ball game and in the Wildcat set. Lynch going to carry it himself. Blake Lynch, the first down, it'll be first and goal. An eight yard carry for the senior receiver. And you see the respect that uh, West Orange has for that fly sweep. They've got to keep their linebackers one step out. That just gives that tackle one more chance and guard to get on those linebackers. We're talking about must stops for Gilmer earlier in the game. West Orange Stark has that right now. Gilmer taking a lot of time here, too. They've, they've, uh, they've had the ball a long time. First and goal at the seven. Lynch remains in at quarterback. He'll carry it again. Blake Lynch. Touchdown. Play. Lucas Garrett, number 70, Dane Jeters, uh, Colin Harden, that left side of that offensive line uh, just exploded into the end zone. Uh, Blake does a great job carrying the ball, but look what he's running behind. He, he didn't get contact to the one yard line. That is a super job by those up front kids from Gilmer. A nine point Gilmer lead, so it's a two score game, and the Buckeyes looking to make it a 10 point advantage. With Escabel for the conversion. 
knuckled through somehow. The extra point kick is good. From 25-7, West Orange Stark at the half, to 35-25, Gilbert, with just under five minutes to play. See McLean Carter happy to see Blake Lynch finish that touchdown drive. Yeah, you just look at the surge. I mean, it's just a, that's a humanity of, of uh, linemen coming down, <laughs> coming down into that end zone. What a great job building that wall uh, for Blake Lynch to get in behind him. Brad, that was an 83-yard, eight-play drive that took three minutes and 39 seconds off the clock. Now they, they scored, took some time off. We've talked about time possession. West Orange had it all the first half. Gilmer starting to take some of it back. They also survived a couple of fumbles there, Craig, that are living a little bit dangerously, but, uh, but survived them. So the Mustangs have to move quickly, and they did do that in the first half. They'll have to recover. Cornell Thompson said his team came ready to play. They certainly were in the first half, but Gilmer has completely turned it around here in the second half, 21 third quarter points. This looks like the undefeated team that was averaging 61 points per game. Yes, in. It really does. And, I, and a lot of times when a team shows up, they're emotional about a teammate. Uh, some of the things that have been going on in Gilmer all year, they're really thinking about him that first half, and they just don't play well. Uh, they got in, thought about it, Coach Strader did an incredible job at halftime. He and his staff getting these kids back mentally where they need to be to play this game. This is going to be a really interesting kickoff. Uh, they've kicked away all day. We're going to see what they do here. Tristan Oliveras, the kickoff for Gilbert. They've had a variety of things. Had one on, one side kick, but several have moved around. This one just playing deep. And it does bounce loose before it's finally scooped up by Wolford. And there goes Dean Wolford the sideline and finally brought down. 4.50 to go, and the Mustangs have to go to work. Boy, what a difference from the first half to the second half. If you look at this, Brad McCoy, West Orange Stark with all the momentum, nearly all of the points. Gilmer struggled in the first half, complete turnaround in the third quarter, and now the fourth. It really is. You know, if we were outside in the cold and a big wind, you'd say that's probably it. But we don't have those conditions in here. It's just, it's just two teams that have turned it around at halftime. Three drives for the Buckeyes, three touchdowns, and really the biggest momentum changing play was the fumble recovery in the end zone that brought Gilmer to within four. To the air. Jackson Dallas unable to hold it is Will Johnson. That's, that's two that Will has, has dropped out there. They're a little, thrown a little short, but he's got he's to make that catch uh, for his teammates. I, I, know, I know he feels tough about both of those drops. So it's second down and 10 for the Mustangs. Time grows short. Baldwin in the backfield along with the quarterback. Dallas. Dallas looking to throw. Does get rid of the football and picked by Chris Boyd. Boyd with the interception and a 16-yard return. He's been a factor on both sides of the ball this afternoon. And Gilmer takes over. Yeah, great pressure there uh, up front. Made, made him get rid of the ball. A gun tip drill. We, tip, we coach it, we teach it. Find the ball, find it somewhere. There's the big tip. We're in the right position. That is a that is a tough, tough break uh, for Jackson Dallas. Tristan Oliveras brought the pressure. And Gilmer with a chance to put it away now with 432 to go. To Boyd. Boyd, who had just had the interception, Bumble. lost the football. And West Orange Stork will get it back. Trey Spencer on the recovery, so still life for the Mustangs. Just was taken loose from Chris Boyd and Spencer on the recovery. Now Chris had a little bit better hands on his interception in return than he did on the, on the carry. Just a great job. West Orange stripping the ball. And I'm sure that's what Coach Thompson's telling them to do. That's your only chance right now. We've got to have the ball, and, and they've got to go score here to have a chance. 4.25 to go. 
Mustangs have two timeouts, but chasing a 10-point deficit. I'd be looking for Demontre Thompson somewhere. Under pressure, Oliveris wraps up Jackson Dallas for the sack, a loss of 11. Again, there's that opposite defensive end. They've, they've pulled over and they started double teaming DeMarco Boyd. That's given Andre Barris a chance to get the last two big plays. He's had pressure on the quarterback. One hurry for an interception and one big sack for a loss of about 10. Second and 21. The clock still ticking. And Jackson Dallas was over at the sideline to get the play call. And now Mustangs have to move quickly to the line of scrimmage. the 24. Screen set up and incomplete. And that was close to being picked off by Oliveris who tipped it. Third down at 21 for West Orange Stark. That was an incredible job. Been talking about the Gilmer off defensive line all night, but if you look at this, they, they feel that they're not getting blocked this time. They feel the screen, and instead of rushing Dallas, they just fall back right in his lap. Great discipline from the Gilmer defensive line, all three of them. Uh, Felt that they weren't having uh, any pressure. Read that screen really fast and shut that completely down. Tristan Oliveris, a big part of that. Third down at 21 from the 24. Dallas to throw again. And that short hop incomplete. Now it's fourth down. Well, I go back to the tail end of the first half, Brad, the missed field goal, and it looked like Deontay Thompson had returned it 100 yards, but for a block at the back, and it was the right call. It was. Had the block not happened, the illegal block, and he brings it back, it's 32-7. to Does Gilmer recover at that point? You just don't know. I think they would have come back and played tough, but again, it kind of gave West Orange a downer going in, and Gilmer a, a really raise and, and emotion, so you've seen the difference this half. Fourth down. 326 to go and Cornell Thompson shifted it first as if to punt it. We'll see if Baldwin does kick. Now he wanted to throw it out of punt formation and Jeff Trailer called timeout. Coach Trailer wanted to make sure his guys were ready for what they saw coming a fake. <laughs> I don't know if he I don't know if you can see it on TV, but Jeff Trailer, the head coach, he, he ran about a 4-5-40. He ran about 30 yards to get to that official and called timeout. He was moving. He saw the fake coming and he needed to talk to his kids. Went sprinting down the sideline to get the timeout called. Over. Going for the state title. Of course, two years ago they were in this title game and lost to Navasota. And speaking of the top-ranked Rattlers. They have arrived undefeated and record-setting this year with that tremendous pass-catching combination, Shelton Epler and a all-world receiver, Travia Dixon. They, we're going to have fun watching them, but I'm telling you, we've seen McLean Carter and Blake Lynch turn this around game around here in the same fashion. West Orange Stark will punt this time with nobody back for Gilmer. It takes a huge Mustang bounce. It's going to be down at the 23-yard line. It's a 54-yard punt. But the ball goes back to Gilmer. And time really of the essence now. It's time for a DQ big play of the game. After Gilmer had scored to make it 25-14, Brad, this play seemed to change everything. Tremendous effort from DeMontre Boyd. I mean, just really takes care of the quarterback. Get a free touchdown on defense. And yeah, again, that defensive line just took the game over. DeMarco Boyd, just a junior, and he'll be back next year. A huge hit for Boyd to cause the fumble. Here's Chris Boyd upfield and brought down. Gilmer content to run the ball and the clock. Justin Brown the tackle. It's a 40-yard game. Isn't it amazing on uh, two teams that average, you know, 40, 50, 60 points that the play of the game is going to be a, you know, a big hit in the backfield and a one-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown in, a, in an offensive game. It's still defenses that win championships. Second and six from the 27. 
West Orange Dark is down the two timeouts. And Gilmer's going to take all the time it can off the clock. The senior quarterback, McLean Carter, doing just as he glances at that play clock out of the corner. And it's Boyd once more. A bounce outside. Mustang's ready. They're going to run it down. It'll be one down inbounds. That's going to force West Orange Stark to use one of its two remaining timeouts after a loss of four yards. And you know, you know, Coach Trailer's just telling those kids, stay inbounds, stay in, but let that clock run, let them use their timeouts, and hold, hold the football. Hold on to the football. That's indeed. Timeout. West Orange. That is their second charge timeout of the half. Amazing turnaround. Jeff Trailer and the Buckeyes after trailing 19 nothing early just looked like I think you put it best Brad early said it looked like they had not gotten off the bus they were just taking all the shots early knocked down and 25 7 could have been 32 to 7 but for the illegal block on the missed field goal return by Deontay Thompson would have gone for 100 yards and like you said what ifs who knows what might have happened had it been 32 to 7 instead of 25-7 with all the momentum right. and West Orange start getting the football in the third quarter. Exactly, and, and it's a it's a game of momentum swings. I mean, it, it, Gilmer could not get the momentum to swing in, in the first half except for the one touchdown, uh, but they, they've actually stole it at halftime, came out with a big touchdown, then the fumble recovery touchdown, and, and now West Orange has not been able to get it back the second half. The other thing that comes to mind is the early third quarter interception yes. that got Gilmer in business because West Orange Stark had the football to start the second half. Jeff Trailer's going to have to use a timeout here. Timeout. Gilmer. That is their second charge timeout of the half. So they take the timeout to make sure they have what they want. We told you about this being a tale of two halves. And for the Buckeyes, going to the outhouse to the penthouse here because they've really struggled in the first half. They really have. Again, just that was a great double move route. The big fumble recovery here in the end zone. DeMontre does a great job as the team scores a defensive touchdown. And here just a total domination by the offensive line as, as uh, Blake Lynch is able to get into the end zone for that third touchdown. Same thing again. They just, when, you, when that horse is running, you just keep riding it and they have just totally dominated up front. So this comeback and this turnaround is typical. I mean, when you're a coach in the state of Texas and you look at this, you say you got to have domination on defense, and your offensive line has to dominate up front, and that's exactly the recipe that Gilmer has had to go ahead this half. If you're just tuning in or tuned in for this game, did not see any of the four state championship games yesterday, we'll certainly identify our forward player of the game, and then there's a UIL offensive and defensive MVP is voted on by the media overall. And a couple of names come to mind right now as... Pass is thrown incomplete, but a pass interference flag is coming. And Jeff Trailer and the Gilmer coaches wanted to make sure the officials were going to call it. <laughs> Nick Smith, the intended target, bumped by Malik Phillips. I think the flag, I think the foul was obvious. The question was when was the flag coming? And the Coach Trailer and the Buckeyes down wanted to make sure they threw it. They were helping them, weren't they? That's a little surprising there. That's a lot of that puts a lot of trust in your quarterback, McLean Carter, in this situation. Holy! I know, it, I know it's third and number seven. Eight of the defense, ten yard penalty, automatic, first down. But with, with a ten point lead, even on third and seven, it's kind of surprising they don't, that they didn't run the football. It's a lot of trust in their in their senior quarterback, that, and he and he did a good job throwing that away. He throws a great ball there. It may be a pick. Yeah. And Coach Trailer coming in and say, "You're going to throw the flag," which <laughs> they did for holding. And really, Gilmer in the position now where they can pretty much either take a knee down or just run the football a play or two, which they'll do. And carried by Jamal Jackson, senior running back for a gain of three. West Orange Stark has only one timeout left. Second down and seven. What a year it's been for the Buckeyes. Blowing out opponent after opponent, but when they got in some tight games, the one that most notably with Gladewater in the quarterfinal round, found a way to win that one, 41 35. Jackson on the run. Outside. A first down that will seal the deal. 
for the Buckeyes. A nine-yard carry. And it's great to see uh, other young men like Jackson getting in. Senior, been a part of this program for a long time. You know, he's not the starter, uh, but he's getting in, getting some valuable reps uh, his senior year here at the end for a state championship for his hometown. The Buckeyes know they have it now. They can enjoy victory formation here. Who would have fought it when it was 19 0 and then 25 7? West Orange started the half. You know, just big shout out to Jeff Trailer and his staff for, for what they did at halftime emotionally and mentally to turn this team around. You just, uh, you don't, you just don't see that at this, at this level. Uh, being able to go in and come back from that. And it wasn't an exit and opening. They didn't come out here and run a bunch of different formations. Uh, they just came out and did what they are used to doing, but they did it, you know, with a lot more emotion. And uh, that's just that's just a great coaching job at halftime. McLean Carter knows they've got to run one more play. So he's like, let's get to the guys the line of scrimmage, go ahead and run the play quickly, and then that's it. Carter will put down the knee. An epic comeback. And a perfect season for the Gilbert Buckeyes. Jeff Trailer and the Buckeyes claim the 4A Division II state championship, rallying from 19 points down in the first half, an 18 point halftime deficit. Gilbert scores the game's final 28 points, and the Buckeyes are 4A Division II state champions. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it's so much fun to watch high school kids turn it around. I mean, what, a, what a great life example and lessons for both these teams. And, and when you're ahead, what you got to do to keep it. And when you're behind, what you got to do to go ahead. And, and when things go bad, what do you, it's just uh, I love the sport. I love the coaches that are able to turn kids around and teach them something. You know, and I, I know Jeff Trailer is telling his kids the same thing after this game is over. It's, it's a great day, but don't let it be your best day. And, and I, I know that uh, Coach Thompson's got a tough chore because I've been in his shoes a couple of times, too. Uh, just, you know, what you got here, you didn't play your best, you know, but, but let's learn something from it, even if you're a senior. Let's learn something from this that's going to help you down the line uh, when you're a dad, when you're a husband, when you when you're just in life. How can this game help us? And this is a great, great example of things we can do with kids. And for that very talented team he'll have coming back, he can say learn from this and take it back to the field next year for the Mustang. That's right. You, you see a lot of kids on the sideline. They, they move their JVs up. And just that experience of six extra weeks. Uh, after a couple of years, you've, had, you've got kids that have been experienced a whole new year. So that's why you keep seeing a lot of these teams come back perennially uh, to this house because they know how to coach. They know good, good kids. Well, let's go down to the field. Our Aaron Hardigan with winning head coach Jeff Trail. What a perfect ending to a season designated to Desmond Pollard. You told me before the game he's here. He's on those sidelines. What's he telling you right now? Well, when they were dropping those balls out there, four down. I thought I kept telling my coaches we got an angel up there, man. And uh, you know, I told you at halftime they played as good as they could. We played as bad as we could. I thought we'd get the quarterback contained and keep hitting 32. They play so many kids both ways. We play so many kids. I thought we'd have a shot at them late, and uh, my kids just kept believing. And uh, we got to go for you, Dave. A life-altering event that no team coach should ever have to go through. How do you put into words how this group has responded to that? Uh, it, you know, it's just a great belief in uh, each other and the program. And uh, a buddy we love very much. I wish I could have seen him play tonight. He was my best player. And uh, we might have scored more than 35. We had Odez here tonight. Well, I'm sure he gave him a good kick at the half, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, third title in the last decade. What does this mean? Mean. No, this would rather mean to not only you, but really the entire town of Gilbert. It's my greatest one because of Robert Biro, a guy that's coached 42 years. We got him his first championship. Uh, my nephew's on the team. My other nephew, my son's on the team. My best friend's kids are on the team. I got f former players on the team. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how much this one means. This, this is my favorite one. Des is over there celebrating. Go celebrate with your boys, Coach. Congratulations, Craig. All right, thank you very much, Aaron. Time now for our forward player of the game. He made a difference on both sides, but especially with what he did, both in terms of running the football and also catching the football. Blake Lynch is our forward player of the game. What a tremendous effort. You know, it's, it was hard to pick. You know, we, we, we kind of struggled. There was a couple more. DeMontre Bell did a great job. Boy, did a great job. But Blake was just a catalyst. You know, he, he was on both sides of the ball. He, he was a, his presence was evident. When they needed a big play to get back in the game, Blake was there to provide it for him. Valley State 
runner-up at state championship medals being draped on both sides. And the state championship trophy presentation coming up. And of course, we still have so much more to come up. We'll have our non-stop state championship coverage with four championship live coming up momentarily with Rick Renner, Greg Tepper, and Randy Rogers. And of course, game number two of this state championship day two triple header with a 4A Division I title on the line with top-ranked and undefeated Navasota and number two-ranked unbeaten and defending state champion Argyle. Okay. Winners of 31 in a row. That's uh, just coming around the corner. It'll be the kickoff coming right at about 4 o'clock. Yeah, Craig, and I want to say one more thing about Jeff Trailer, the interview uh, that we had on the field with the head coach uh, from Gilmer. You know, I, I, I'm friends with, with Jeff, and I know this isn't a one-time deal. You, you saw emotion from him today. That's been his emotion all year, since the first day of two-a-days. Uh, he gets emotional every time you talk to him because it really was a kid that he loved. He told me that that kid had the best smile of any kid he's ever coached. Uh, so, you know, as coaches, those are those are the golden times. It's what we coach for. It's what we live for is to have an impact on kids and kids having an impact on us. So I, I just want the public to say you know, that wasn't just a one-time deal with a tear that he was emotional today because of the state championship. He's been that way every day since they lost that kid. Let's go down to the field. Aaron Hardigan with Boyd, one of the key factors today for Gilbert. Hey, with a very emotional, we're, we're going to bring Coach in real quick. I got to know, guys, what was it at the half? A completely different team in the second half. What was said? What changed? We don't let up. That's just who we are. We, we told them nobody in the stadium believed we were going to do it but us in this room, and uh, we felt good about it, and we got it done. A season designated to your boy, Desmond Pollard. He's here today, man. What's he saying? Smiling. He's smiling. A life-altering event, Chris. Very difficult one you've had to go there. How do you put into words what this group has been through and has accomplished this year? Um, kids like us shouldn't have to go through things like that, but it's life. And we got, we got through it. We fought through it. Uh, we took, we handled it well. We had to mature real fast, though, and we, we just had to come out here and get the job done. I mean, we couldn't let up. When you, when you dedicate your season or you dedicate anything to somebody, you got to do it to the max. You can't let up, take no, nothing our off. Our team never quit believing because their leader never quit believing. He never quit believing, so the rest of them didn't. That's why we won. Neither did you. Chris, what about this one to your right? What has he done for you and this program? He did a lot for me. If it weren't for Coach, I don't know where I'd be right now. I'm coming for you, Coach. <laughs> hey, you two go celebrate. Congratulations, Craig. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Aaron. You can see the emotion on the face of the senior running back, Chris Boyd. Had a big interception on defense. Big moments on offense as well. So now the presentation of the defensive MVP. Well, that's a good call. Yeah, DeMarco Boyd, who caused the fumble that really flipped all the momentum, was recovered by Devin Smith for the touchdown. And you mentioned DeMarco Boyd had a monster game today. He did, and he was one of the big changes because West Orange had to go into halftime and figure out how to block him. They had to take two to three people the second half, which allowed Ontiveros on the other side to have a big, big, big impact on the game the second half. So he, he made West Orange change their game. Now for the offensive MVP. As selected by the media here today, the offensive player of the game from Gilmer High School, number nine, Blake Lynch. We told you about Blake Lynch and his huge day and overcoming some cramping there on the sidelines and able to come back in finish the touchdown drive to give them the lead and then adding one more score yeah it was really it was really fun to watch you know uh, you know Blake is is, is a commit he was uh, matched up with Deontay Thompson it was an Alabama commit on the other side of the ball and they kind of went away from him early thinking they couldn't throw it to Montre and then they said oh, forget this this is what we do and when they went back to him you know Blake made the plays and opened the game up remember he had the big 66 yard reception when he cramped up and still managed to come back and make a difference down the stretch for the Buckeyes in 
Even, in the, wild, even in the Wildcat formation, he was the guy. Now for the state championship trophy presentations. The Mustangs of West Orange Stark High School have represented their school with pride. The runner-up trophy. Coach Cornell Thompson will now accept the state finalist trophy. From Superintendent Sylvia Martinez, Principal Rod Anderson, and Academic Coordinator Ronald White of West Orange Stark ISD. We congratulate the Mustangs of West Orange Stark for an outstanding season. And it was a great year for the Mustangs. Even ending in disappointment, a tremendous season for West Orange Star. Yeah, and it's hard to have words, Greg, for Coach Thompson and those kids right now. They poured everything into what they've got here. They had they had the game in their hands at halftime, uh, and then and then came out and, and lost it. It's just tough to put words. I'd like to recognize the 4A Division II football state champion, the Buckeyes of Gilmer High School, with a record of 16 and 0. Coach Jeff Trailer and his team have achieved the goal of becoming Texas High School State Champion. Coach Trailer will now accept the state championship trophy from Superintendent Rick Albritton and Principal Greg Watson of Gilmer ISD. Congratulations on an incredible season. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, your 4A Division II State Football Champion, the Buckeyes of Gilmer High School. What a season. What a second half, and what a day for the Gilmer Buckeyes. The memories of a lost teammate still with him in heart and spirit, and Gilmer fights back to win the 4A Division II state championship. I want to remind you that our nonstop state championship coverage will continue after this with Ford Championship Live with Rick Renner, Greg Temper, and Randy Rogers. That's followed by the Class 4A Division I state championship. Argyle and Navasota coming up at 4 o'clock. And we'll wrap up the day approximately 8 o'clock tonight with a 5A Division II state championship matchup between Innes and Cedar Park. For Brad McCoy and Aaron Hardigan, I'm Craig Way. Gilbert, your state champions of 4A Division II.